seen? I think her biggest deal is she starred in a pilot. Pilot? What's a pilot? Well, you know the show's on TV. I don't watch TV. Yes, but you are aware that there's an invention called television, and on that invention they show shows? Yeah. Well, the way they pick those TV shows is they make one show, and on that show it's called a pilot. Then they show that one show to the people that pick the shows, and on the strength of that one show they decide that they want to make four shows. Some get chosen to become television programs. Some don't become nothing. She started the ones that became nothing. Oh, we're gonna have you do the opening, right? There. Oh yeah, there we do. Right <clears throat> Welcome to Couch Pilots, all of my friends, the show that dares to fly into the unknown territory of awful television pilots of the past. My name is Jason, and with me is the man uh, who is on assignment death. It's Captain Philip Restisher. Good evening. I love you. Yeah. I'm reading well, it exactly, exactly love, as it says. Yeah, you gotta say I love you, otherwise I have I have issues with trust and um, my uh, just all around being in the universe. Uh, thanks for thanks for doing that intro. My pleasure. Uh, why, why don't you guys just do the banter and then you'll just introduce me later? <laughs> no, okay, no, 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 no. We don't like to. I've done enough. We, we don't. <laughs> I've done enough. I should just go right now. Actually, well, that was. Uh, we had a bet who was going to do more, and Tim doesn't want to lose. <laughs> <laughs> that that o- opening song was the song was called Alien Attack, but the the uh, the band is called Spock. And okay. the album is called Assignment Earth, which is very on the nose. Wow. <laughs> That's, man, you, you really do do a lot of looking on the internet. I, I never heard of that before, but I almost did uh, Earth Song by Michael Jackson. You ever hear tell of that? I don't know that one. It was one of his singles from the 1994 uh, history album, uh, Earth Song, basically his plea for us to save the planet. Mm. Oh. I don't know how much he really did for the planet after that, except um, help not repopulated by being a homosexual man. <laughs> And a pedophile? That's right. Well, I don't know. Yeah, well, no, I don't it know was never that. proven. <laughs> Hearsay. Proven enough. Um, proven enough. I'm comfortable calling it. If Johnny pedophile. Depp can get out of anything, <laughs> Michael could have got out of it, too. Right after that, we did hear an opening uh, from David Lytle, one of our fan favorite guests, and then also a contributor since he moved out of state. Yeah, he's doing a lot of... doing. A, I, I got uh, like some more stuff I'm going to email him just to do for us. Yeah, you remember that website? It goes. It was an app, kind of like Fiverr. Like it's called Fiverr. That's exactly right. We'll just pay uh, David to do stuff for us going forward. Maybe he can fix the phone number problem. <laughs> Maybe we can introduce the guest. Let's get him. Maybe here. we can put it. him in charge of the Instagram, and we'll pay him ten dollars. <laughs> Will you introduce the guest? I, there's something uh, we got to get into. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, you heard him last week. You heard him. You're hearing him this week. He did the intro for Jason. Uh, one of our favorite friends, uh, newly single. So, ladies, email us with the, your pictures of your breasts. <laughs> No need of no need to face picture. Just a nice breast butts. Butts would be good too. Breast, yeah, don't send us any vagina pictures. That's no, that, no, no. that's tacky. That's we need classy. It's a little over the line. Yeah, we need classy pics. You don't send us. We don't send you dick pics. Don't send us <laughs> vagina pics. Uh, he is co-host of the podcast Challenged. Welcome back to the show, Tim. Thank you, Can't thank you, it. thank you. I thought like I didn't need to go into all your credits because they just heard them last week. Right. Well, and they speak for themselves. You know. Right. 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 They got to know who I am by now already. Hot tub man. The hot tub guy. <laughs> the, Fanta, the Fanta Stealer. Fanta Thief. Yeah. Again, it's not stealing if I give it to you. That's so good, though. Now, just remember, next time I'm over at your house and I'm in the hot tub, I'm like, boy, I would like to have a Fanta. All right. I'll pick up some Fanta just for you. <laughs> okay. Are you exclusively don't, an orange Fanta guy? I don't, or do like, you have, I don't like the grape. I you don't, don't like the grape? grape. What, no. Is there a strawberry Fanta? I was going to yeah. say, there are other flavors. Yeah. Strawberry, yeah. grape, orange. There's what, lime? Is that the one? Oh, I don't know. I liked Strawberry Crush. That's so a popular one. I, I, th- I got to assume I would like a Strawberry Fanta. Yeah, Strawberry's not on my... It's not your thing. Zeitgeist. Yeah. Well, that's a good transition using the word zeitgeist there because uh, while I do have more... Welcome back to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I have more questions for Tim this week, but I wanted to open up... Holy um, shit. There's a lot of them. A lot of what? Questions? No, a lot of different flavors for Ooh, Fanta. Okay. Want, let's dig into that real quick since it seemed to capture your imagination. Uh, okay. There is... Uh, there, Jesus. Mm-hmm. Pina colada. Mango. Pine, pina, pina, pineapple. Pineapple. There's ex- a pina colada. Oh, I would drink a pineapple one. Mm-hmm. Pina colada. There is Raspberry. a pineapple. There, there is a pineapple? Is a a different kind of orange. Oh, no, it's orange. Blood it's orange. Like, no, just orange. Um, Blood moon. And there's more, but the website doesn't really. Cran apple. 
I really felt blue like, Raz. I, I find there is a blue Raz. I, I find that I am not good with the internet. Green Apple, probably is one. Products go to, okay. There's a a dragon fruit, <laughs> strawberry. People are clamoring pineapple, for this. grape, yeah. peach. Yeah. Ooh, peach would be gross. Sugar free orange. Gross. Pina colada and then uh, Fanta berry, blueberry. Blue okay. yeah. Fanta berry. <laughs> I had that once. Fanta berry. Fanta berry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I can't be. I can't be good all the time. That's true. Uh, before we uh, start uh, hammering Tim with more questions, you like you, you like being asked questions, right? It's about you. Sure. You, you have the answers to you. Most of them. Um, we, something was released a couple weeks ago, and you had asked me about it. I want to give my two cents on it. And uh, we were talking about him a little bit during the break, but uh, Norm MacDonald had released. Oh, yeah. a, well, not him because he's dead. But um, someone released a special that he had recorded before he died. Oh, really? Did you hear about this? No. Is it good? It was fine. Uh, this is what happened. He died, right? And then um, a few months later, Netflix had a big event. Which they have? I think they have like an event probably every quarter or something. Like, hey, this is, hey, this is who we are and this is what we're coming out with. Aren't you excited? And the most recent one, they had a little uh, room off to the side. So this is the room for Norm MacDonald's uh, tribute, because not only did he have a show on this program, but the CEO of Netflix, Ted Sarandos, or whatever his name is, he loved Norm MacDonald. So he said, we want to have a tribute for him. And they had, they had very high-profile people at this tribute. And uh, during that time, they said, Norm MacDonald, before he died, he recorded an hour special. He was going to go in a procedure, in his words, if things go south, I want to make sure this is recorded. So he did it just in front of his computer. Hmm. It was during COVID to where he didn't have time to go to the clubs and, and like try out his material, really fine-tune. He didn't do it in front of people. The whole special is just his face with a microphone. In, in front, front of a laptop. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. There, every once in a while, you get a weird special like that. I think Harlan Williams did a special literally on top of a mountain by himself, filmed by a helicopter. It's insane. Yeah. Uh, Maria Banford did one where it was she was in her living room. Her, her parents were the speaking only to her parents. Yeah. It was called my special special special, <laughs> and she's she is the perfect cr- kind of crazy for me. I love Maria yeah. Banford. Bo Burnham did something like that too. Okay, I'm not aware of that. What, what did he do? I think his was called Locked In, but it was just him in his uh, apartment during okay. co- again during COVID and just yeah these creative people need an outlet they need to yeah you know do whatever so yeah it's just him by himself. It's, it's I think it'd be really easy to be like, you know, I'll just wait till everything opens up. But if you're smart, you would say, let me let me find a way to make this work, and I'll be the only guy during the pandemic releasing yeah. anything. It's probably smart. There, there's well, there's something smart in there. Well, and with Norm's special circumstances too, is you know, like, like you said, he said if something goes wrong, I want to have it recorded. Yeah, so. he knew he was dying, right? He yeah. had cancer. Or something. Well, he had cancer. I think that he was kind of battling for nine years, and I'm sure during that time, you know, the things had uh, ebbed and flowed, as it were. Right. But he, he died in September of 2001, but this res- the special was uh, recorded in 2000. <clears throat> uh, 2000 okay. uh, 21. 20, 2020, I think. 20, I think yeah. That's right. Okay. But so, yeah, things were closed down, and he couldn't get out there. And his previous special was very good. It's called, like... Um, uh, gossip and hearsay, trickery, something like that. Hitler's dog is very funny. Anyway, so he does this special. It's about 50, 60 minutes long. Not, it's not super tight. There, there's some meandering going on in there. It's very norm like. Um, and it's overall, it's not his best special. And it's, it's a tough watch for me personally because I love him very much. And then at the end, it's interesting because you see him as you see him the entire special, but then the camera zooms out, to steal a phrase from you last episode, Blake. And, in, and what it is, it zooms out to a room, and in that room you have um, people that knew him personally and loved him, and the people who had kind of worked with him closely. You had uh, David Letterman. You had... Um, Dave Chappelle. Yeah. Uh, uh, Molly Dave, Shannon. Dave, Molly Shannon, David Spade. Conan O'Brien and, and Adam, Adam Sandler. Adam, Adam Sandler. So all, it's all six of them, including <laughs> Adam Sandler. <Berger. laughs> They all watch. They all watch the special, and then right after that, you kind of get their thoughts and feelings about the man, and also the special. Mm-hmm. It was a little disjointed. Um, it, everything overall was fine, but it's like when, it, when someone you love dies, you don't think, "Oh, they're going to leave me this this hour and a half thing." But that's what we got. And right. it's, it's, it, to me, it, for those reasons, it is very special. Sure, yeah, it's very now, cool. So you weren't even aware of this? No, I wasn't. Is this on Netflix? It's yeah. on Netflix. Right. Yeah. Uh, and just just call your wife and yeah. ask her what the password is to, to your Netflix. <laughs> Ex-wife. Ex-wife. Ah, there you yeah, see, yeah, see, see, I got I you. It. I caught it. Ah. I, I was a big fan of Mitch Hedberg, mm-hmm. and I had a chance to see him live. Or did you now? I did, but he was the opener to like Dave Attell, and then I forget who the third one was. was but was, he was, was this in New York? 
No, it was they, they were like touring around. I think it was during like the up all night thing. So like David Tell was a big draw. Oh, and Somniac, you mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah the, that's what I meant. Sorry, the Comedy Central show. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I didn't go. I was like, I'm going to wait until Mitch Hedberg is a headliner, and then he died. It was very disappointing. But I would like if he. But had you didn't get to see this, him live too, though. I never saw Mitch Hedberg. Oh, I thought you said you did see him. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. I had a chance to. I chance, passed it up because I didn't. I didn't want to see him do a fifteen minute opener. You, you didn't know? know that he loved heroin so much. I did so. not know that he was going to die like <laughs> months later. I would have done it, but yeah, it's it's hard when like you're a big fan of these guys, you really like them, and then they yeah. They croak. Mitch Hedberg is an interesting. I think he's a lot like Norm Macdonald in, yeah. in that they have very specific cadences. Yeah, and they want to tell you jokes. Yeah, they don't want to tell you about their lives. Yeah, they're not story yeah. teller people. And, and, but there is something to storytelling, I think, though, too, because at the end of the day, there's a lot about like, hey. Uh, comic stole this from me you can't steal another guy's life right you know you can steal a guy's joke but a guy's life is a life but mitch hamburg i think by all accounts is, is as pure as a stand-up comedian as you're going to get concerning telling jokes yeah he's, there's he's, a punchline yeah. there's a setup a punchline yeah and then here's the next joke yeah and then here's the next joke yeah. <laughs> it's just one after the other yeah now he had released a couple of specials i believe in his day mm-hmm. the first one was called mitch all together yeah uh, maybe that was the first one another one was called uh, strategic grill locations both are very mm-hmm. funny yeah then after he had died, they had cobbled together something, and I, I believe it was called "Do You Believe in Gosh?" And I love Mitch Hedberg. Not a good album, though. Yeah, yeah. Well, but there's it's a similar reason. to the Norm Macdonald thing. Of just I think like, you're right. There's some content that's still here if you're a big fan. It, Johnny Cash had like unreleased stuff too. He was singing yeah. gospels by right. the end, just because, you know, whatever. He was just. I think you just try to plug out as much work as you can while you're dying. It's terrible, but yeah, you know, I mean, you know I mean, not every Tupac song that we got after he was dead was really worth it. But you but know, every hologram was worth it. Oh well, anytime a hologram is, I, I, you know, you want to impress me, put me in front of a hologram. You had said you you had seen this special too, the yes. Norma Down special, and I had purposefully not asked you what you thought of it because I wanted to hear about it here. So oh, okay. can, can you can you tell me your, your your thoughts about what you saw there? Well, okay, so I started to watch it by myself. And then, uh, then people came into the house, and I turned it off. And those people did their merry way, you know. And I was like, okay. And I, I really enjoyed maybe the first twenty minutes of it for sure. Like I was really into the gambling stuff, and and the the slut shaming was was hilarious. But then I was like, okay, I need to watch the rest of this. So I said to said people in this house, I'm going to turn this on. You probably won't like it because it's not, you know. That norm's not for everybody in a joke standpoint. I said, I don't want to be interrupted. I don't want any, I'm going to watch this. This means something for me to watch this. So I watched the rest of it and said people were already in their rooms. So I I enjoyed it. It, I I found it very sad at the end, you know, and not to give a bunch of stuff away, but when he was talking, you know, his dad and his mom had, you know, he talked about his mom. But I thought, like, yeah, I mean, true. Would these would these jokes have landed better if he was in an audience or if he had time to maybe work it out even more? Yeah, probably. But it was the rawest of, you know, and like to me that was what was cool about it is yeah. it wasn't cleaned up. It wasn't. We don't polished get to up. see that usually. Mm-hmm. Right. We don't get yeah. to see the the final product. The, right. The, the polished thing. Right. Yeah. We don't. And, and you know, and when the dog barks, I just I, that was to me it wasn't supposed to be funny. Yeah. But I, I, to me, I was super funny. Yeah. yeah. You know, he, in the back of his head, he was like, I'm fucking filming this for Netflix. The fucking can't get the dog shot. He didn't know he was filming it for Netflix then. No, I thought he did. No, I, he didn't oh. film it. I, I think he was just saying, I, tomorrow I'm going to have a procedure okay. as, as it relates to my cancer. I thought he was, I thought it was part of like, he still had contractually and still did. I'm sure he did. I'm sure there was something to that. But I think he was thinking, um, that no one knows about my cancer. Yeah. And if I'm going to, I, I want, I want to put this out there. I want to make sure this is recorded. Right. This material, right. in case something tomorrow during my procedure goes bad. Right. Yeah. I, I I didn't think it was the best stuff, but I also knew that it wasn't refined. It hadn't been worked yeah. through. So there, yeah. there is something to that. The rawness yeah. of it. Yeah. Right. And it's just cool that he did it. Like he knew that he would have fans that would be interested sure. in it, and he had, he wanted to give like one more gift as he sure. was on his way out. It's kind of nice. Yeah, and he didn't die for another probably year, year and a half after that. But mm. but he didn't know. He didn't know yeah. what the next yeah. day would bring. When you got to imagine, he's not in the best of health. He's probably not in the mood to record after. I like think a we big should, situation like that. I think we should do that. We should record an episode of Couch Pods, and and, and then after we die, they can put it out. Mm-hmm. And our, yeah, uh, was there a movie like that recently? They said we made a movie, and it's not going to be released for a hundred years. It's mm-hmm. in a vault. That, that that is a thing. I think it exists. I can't remember who made it, mm-hmm. but it is a very real huh. thing. And then, of course, you have the Jerry Lee, the Jerry Lewis movie, 
um, where he played the uh, Holocaust clown, and that's been locked in a vault somewhere where we can't see that either. Right. You guys, have you heard of that? No. But don't look it up. Yeah. It is real, but do not look it yeah. up. But there's, uh, there's musicians that do that. Uh, was it Wu-Tang recorded an album, and they only printed one copy of it? Oh, yeah. They sold was the... the one copy? Well, who bought it? Uh, the fucking Pharma Bro guy. Martin Scarelli. Yeah, that's right. yeah. He, he, yeah. Just, he just got out of jail. Oh, did he? Yeah, he just got out of jail. And now he can yeah. go home and listen to his Wu-Tang album that no one else yeah. gets. <laughs> what a fucking piece of shit. Oh, that's great. Oh, can you imagine being Wu-Tang? Yeah, you gotta be pissed. They say right? we're, we're for the kids, we're for the people. And then the, the guy most against people gets his album. <laughs> <laughs> right. And he doesn't even like Wu Tang. Yeah. He just wanted to like tempt celebrities yeah. to come to his house yeah. and listen to it with him and shit. Oh, what a horrible piece Terrible. of shit. He's Terrible. a Republican, by the way. I'm going to vote sure for that. him. I'm sure of that. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I bet he is a Republican. I do want to say, though, we'll get past the norm stuff. I just want to put that out there. Oh, yeah. But uh, I am glad that existed. I'm glad I got to meet him and talk to him, for even if it was just a moment. Uh, all that was very special. And like I said, when a guy dies, you never think there's any more. But when there is and it's a surprise, it means a lot. Sure. Mm-hmm. So uh, if you haven't heard it, I would say definitely check out Nothing Special. Uh, by Norm MacDonald on Netflix. It's, it's pretty cool. And tell me if you think the slut-shaming bit was as funny as I did. We both love sluts like, quite a bit, don't we? <laughs> I do want to focus back on Tim's as our guest. Please. Um, a couple things. One. Who's getting your hot tub when you die? <laughs> <laughs> you want it? Yeah. All right, you got it. It's yours. Really, say You're in my will. His wife or his current Don't wife. want the cat, though. <laughs> you, um, you owned a building. Mm-hmm. And half of that, your wife worked in, your ex-wife, yeah. I'm sorry. And the other half had uh, lain dormant until you had turned it into a kind of a, a makeshift podcast studio yeah. with maybe, mm-hmm. uh, uh, not delusions, but like ideas of grandeur in your head of what it could delusions become. Delusions is probably the right word. Uh, I don't know. It's, people want to create content. Right. You, you could be an influencer uh, endorser, perhaps. Right. Something like that. But since the divorce that we covered in, in, uh, in length last week, um, you are no longer... Have anything to do with that building, but yeah. you, you have a new space for recording podcasts. I and yeah. I, I haven't seen this, and I don't. I, honestly, I don't know anything about it. Okay, it's an yeah. It's my first building that I bought. Yeah, my ex got that building in the divorce, but so I have another one. It was actually the Needle Exchange place. Okay, uh, they left, and so I had a like a vacant spot, and so I talked to a realtor about like maybe booking it up, and this realtor was just like, "Oh, you're never gonna get somebody in here because it's just like Peoria, it's COVID, you know, whatever." So it's like, well, this is kind of perfect timing. We'll move the podcast studio into, into my building and vacate my ex-wife's. And yeah, so we're setting up in the new building. So you're still working on it or you're currently recording it? You're, what, what, is the, what is happening right now? We are still working on it. Wolfie, it's, it's mostly Wolfie's thing. I'm not super Kind of like involved. before, right? He yeah. set it up before. I said, here's the keys. Go. Go sick. Go do whatever you want. Uh, so yeah, he's currently setting up. I, I set up like a, our milk, like a platform that's one of the last things that we need but yeah i think we'll start recording it pretty soon oh so you haven't yet recorded. we have not yet recorded. So have you been recording from your house yeah yeah typically. in your basement bar now it's at my kitchen table because like there's nothing else i think i recorded at that table once when we were doing that da- dad podcast yes you did yeah it's just kind of easier and i don't know there's windows interesting I don't know. so the the area in which that building is is, is on the not in the south side but it's is in the warehouse district no it's on the north end of adams Oh, it's, so it's, it's towards the McCluggage Bridge. Yeah, it's thought, closer to the McCluggage Bridge. on the south. Okay. No, it's actually pretty close to Hofbrau. So, it, but, so it's not an awesome area. No, it's not. A, it's very industrial and, yes, yeah, not exactly. It's down by O'Brien, like, O'Brien Steel, probably. It's right across the street. Directly across the street. Really? Yeah. Yeah, okay. we're looking directly at the O'Brien Okay, now I know. I know, yeah. I know. Yep, cool. So, yep. so do you have any concern about going there to podcast or you feel like it's a pretty safe uh, venture it's yeah it's safe i mean it's like it's an industrial part of town yeah. so it's i mean i don't think there's a ton of crime but it's it's definitely like uh poverty you know and just how do you acquire and... <laughs> a, how do you acquire a building i just bought it <laughs> Like I mean, that's what he's asking. How do you buy? No, it? no. I'm just saying. Like, <laughs> what, what made you go? I, I, I want to buy a building, and then I want to buy this building. Like, what? Oh, what? I wanted to get into real estate. I just thought real estate's a good way to make like passive income, and so I bought. That was my first building I bought. There's three apartments on top, and then there's two commercial spaces underneath. Oh, so people live in those apartments? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, and so yeah, it's uh, yeah. I got a mortgage on it, and the people upstairs basically pay the mortgage, so the space is free. Okay. So, so can yeah. can we if we go to record there sometime? Since there's people living up there, we can't scream. You could. Because I love yeah. screaming as a podcaster. <laughs> I guess when the Wolfords were leaving one time, one of the tenants upstairs came down and were like, why were you guys being so loud? Exactly. That's exactly yeah. my first thought here with But tenants. like, we weren't being loud. I don't know. It was very weird. Well, they're probably just not used to there being any other noise in their building besides. Right. 
Were you like, I'm the landlord, why don't you shut your fucking mouth? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't there, thankfully, or I would have. Yeah. How about I exchange you some needles? Yeah, How there you go. We have, I, there's still a bunch of needles in the bag. You can Holy help Christ. yourself. Help yourself. But that was a clean needle exchange. So yeah, yeah. if you were if you love drugs so much and you put them into your skin via a needle, you could go there and be safer about it. Yeah, and there was a safe injection zone in the back. So it's, if you wanted to go inject heroin, it'd be like, okay, go in that room. We'll check on you. You really? know, make wow. sure make sure that you're not going to overdose. It's like a crash shit. investigation site off <laughs> yeah. the interstate. Is what right. that is. Super weird, isn't that Man, bizarre? That is bizarre. Yeah, it's super weird. Yeah. So wow. you can still, there's still signs up. So if you guys want to inject safely, uh, you're welcome. To can we have one of those signs? You're welcome to go to my building. I mean, you uh, want sure. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he wants yeah. one of those signs. Yeah. I do. <laughs> I'll trade you for a Fanta. You know what? I'll give you three Fantas. Oh, man. So when you deliver bad, it. When you deliver it. You're a bad negotiator, it. man. You're a bad Am negotiator. I? Yeah. That's probably why my both to my divorces have gone so shitty for me. <laughs> That's probably definitely you, You'll get better the next time. Um <laughs> Is that is that the plan then? Future all future podcasting for you is concerning challenged will be done at this building. I think that's where we'll do the video episodes. I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I don't know. You now, in the past, you had done one called Internet Freak Show. Yeah, and you said, hey, "Come have a chicken with me. You have, have something to eat with me." And I did, and you said you should be on one of those. And then yeah. I never heard anything from you ever again. And then nothing has happened. Yeah, no, nothing has happened. So I, I, you've not recorded any of those because they've not popped up in my feed because I'm a subscriber. To the Internet yeah, yeah I, mean, I, am, I am as well, and I can prove it. Yeah, no, I haven't done it in a, in a year or two. Yeah. So, so do you have any interest to return to it? I do. Um, Blake's, I just have it. Well, there I am. Look at that. Blake to, proved that he's a subscriber. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm not going to show you. You have to take my word for it. <laughs> I don't care if you yeah. subscribe or not. I know you don't. <laughs> um, no, I, I, I like the show. I like the content. It's just a lot of work. And, you know, I've work. had a lot going on, so I haven't done it. But. Like what? What have you had going on? <laughs> got a fucking cat. <laughs> uh, I got a hot tub, man. <laughs> yeah, I got it's a hot like, tub and I'm slanging pussy. Yeah, it's like, oh, write an internet freak show episode or sit in my hot tub? Let me think. No, Let me that, think. Uh, I don't want to get that. Quick. I don't want to get the notepad, <laughs> notepad out that, that, that has all my notes because this girl will go, "What's this for?" And I have to right. tell my podcast, and then she'll go, "Fuck, I'm out of here." <laughs> right. I want to do a podcast about internet stuff. That is a good question, though. <laughs> You're uh, married to a lady, and by all accounts, she was cool with you podcasting because not only did she have her own podcast about um, Snowpiercer, right? Right. Yeah, right? yeah. But she also uh, would occasionally jump on Challenged. Yeah. Now, here's a good question. This, this now is she's a, a TikTok celebrity. Oh, uh, she, does she do well on Blake there? loves her Does she on do TikTok. well on there or not? She's got a lot of followers. Does I she don't really? know. Yeah. Well, mental health is a big thing right now. I think she's doing a lot of mental health stuff on there. I so, think so. I don't so, know. I don't look at it. Blake sends me shit every once in a while. It's, it's, I'm like, it's oh, a pot calling the kettle black, right? For yeah. mental health? I <laughs> oh, don't want to say <laughs> yeah. that on the show. Oh, probably. sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sorry. No, but my, you can. My, I, I'm not offended by anything you I said. I want to uh, probably steal some information from uh, Tim, as I steal a lot of things in my life from Tim. Is that when you start dating a lady that you meet on one of these applications, when do you tell her, oh, by the way, I do a podcast? Because I find that dries up a lady quicker than taking <laughs> her to an 8-bit arcade. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know if it's come up yet. I'm going to have to think so, on that one. I don't so think I've ladies, told her that. all the ladies, even first dates and even the multiple dates, it's never come up that you do a podcast. No, I really, you know what's weird? And I should get dating advice from you. No, you should not. I don't talk about myself much. I no, ask that them, is good. That I is good. I ask them a lot of questions. You're and doing the, that's right. That's how you do it. If she, if she asks me a question, I try to immediately switch it back to her. I'm just not. Like, Girls are usually too dumb to be like, um, oh, is, why is he trying to evade the question? They're just like, oh, he's asking about me. I would love to talk about me. Right. Yeah. It's not just, I guess I shouldn't say girls being dumb. Anyone likes to talk about yeah, I think about that's a normal themselves. human thing. Yeah. So you're you're smart. Just 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 in general, you're a smart guy, but you're also doing this uh, dating smart. Yeah. Well, it's a little air of mystery, too. Like you There know. is something. Oh, like you're kind of like, yeah, like, you know, like the guy in the Tesla behind, you know, with the sunglasses Yeah, on. but he doesn't <laughs> talk about his job ever. Like, Does, is he a murderer? Yeah, I got to ask. I'm going to go out with him again to find like, out. Oh, I've been out with him four times. I don't know what he does for his job even. Like, that's fucking weird. But he, <laughs> played, he paid for me to have the salmon, so I know who cares. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, he took me to a, a video game arcade <laughs> For a date, funny. it's so interesting. And he gave me a card with unlimited <laughs> coins. On right. It. Right. Well, that's uh, you're doing. You're doing it right then, because I find as soon as you tell me of a podcast, well, I'll look it up, and then after that, you never hear from him again, <laughs> right? Or you, or you do hear from him again, and it, it is it becomes very clear very quickly that they are mentally ill, <laughs> right? And that's that's all. I, that, that's the, that's the end of my knowledge. But it, you've told you've gotten in trouble for this podcast with some of the ladies you've dated. 
Yes. At least one of the ladies. Yes. Uh, women do not like that you podcast because it means that you have fun outside of uh, their the relationship. Right. And you should not have any fun. They find it as a threat. And you can yeah. expose some potentially you, personal information. You can, but but I never. I usually, you, you don't. I personally, I usually do not talk about the women no. that I date on this show. Blake, t- Blake talks it's, about it, the women you date. It's oh. kind of <laughs> no. What it, I would say that it's kind of like uh, when they get angry about it. You said because it's taking away from their relationship. Yeah. It's almost as if you were like hanging out with like a couple girlfriends, like the you, platonic girlfriends. It would be the same reaction. Well, that that is, I don't know, I, I I don't know what you're doing to me right now, but you you know damn well that there is no such thing as a platonic girlfriend. I'm just used. I'm making an analogy. It, it does. They, they it, react the same way. It does. Kind and of, it's, that, all it is is just guys around a microphone. We're an, not yeah. we're not grabbing anybody's tits. Yeah, that's an extreme example of it. But you're right. I'm extreme. What can I say? They want me for the X Games, but I say no. You're the Mountain Dew of this podcast. <laughs> you're extreme. You're the extreme flavored Doritos of this show. That's right. <laughs> But um, no, it sounds like you're doing the dating right. Like you're you're asking them questions, you're taking them to arcades. That's right. Hey, quite the charmer. Because to be honest with you, you're not going to get them into bed as quickly if the, if you start answering questions or, oh, yeah. or, or telling them about yourself. Yeah, that's get, that's yep. only ammunition to turn them the, off. The, yeah. That that is not, nothing bad about you. I'm just saying. No, no, no. I'd, you're that makes it makes your mysteryness. Yeah, that's what you're. That's why you're getting laid. Is you're keeping in yourself a mystery. I, the yeah. dude's got it on lockdown. What can I say? What I was can in I, that, say? Like, I learned this. I learned the ropes pretty quick. I mentioned a few. <laughs> I watched a YouTube video on how to online date. <laughs> That's smart. No, I had mentioned had to get laid. Uh, last episode that I had a phase where I kind of did the same thing. It's very exhausting. Yeah. And I'm just I'm not up to it anymore. I'm just too old and I'm too broken down. And you know, what I like to do is I like to uh, like eat, uh, get a quesadilla. And then I'll eat it and I'll take a nap. <laughs> and that's it. But you're not done forever, right? You're just taking a break. You'll come, I don't, you'll go, you'll I don't come know. back. I, I, I find that um, what I want in a relationship, and you might find this too because you're anti-marriage, that there's there, no one will have that same opinion as you. Right. Every woman that has ever existed, either they, there's like, I want to get married, or they don't know that they want to get married and right. they do. And then the third option is like, just like is not a person that you could ever hang out with or talk to. It's like <laughs> like th- any person worth anything, female wise, they want to get married. That's just it. Really, you think that's true? Oh, one hundred percent. Really, one hundred percent. So you, like, you are more experienced. I'll take your word for it. I that. don't have, I, I don't have any more in me to want to like feel it out yeah. with the lady. I, I just, I don't have, I, I'm done. I, just, so, I have nothing left. But let get. me ask you that. You, you tell the ladies that up front, right? I do. You say, like first, second date, you're like, I'm not getting married. I'm not getting too serious with this. If they continue to see you, do you have guilt? Like you've misled them? If they no, come no, and say they no, want no, more? I, I've had, actually, I dated a lady for a year one time and I, very early in the relationship, I told her I'm not interested in getting married, but she was a dumb lady and she's like, I'll change, I'll change his mind. He'll right. want to, he'll want to marry yeah, me. Yeah. And at the end, she's like, oh, he didn't want to marry me. I'm going to break up with him. And that, that's what happened. And then, and then got engaged look- not that long after, right? Probably yeah. so. I, I didn't keep track of this no, lady. Yeah. Did she guilt trip you? Like, no. how could you do this? No, she no was pretty I, cool I, think, I think at one point she's like, why don't you ask me to marry you? I was like, I remember the second date? <laughs> That's yeah, I'm, I'm not a liar. <laughs> right. Yeah, because that's where I'm at. I'm just very honest with these women, and it's like, if you choose to date me anyway, like that's on you. Well, I, th- I think what you'll find right now is a newly single guy telling ladies you don't want to get married. You're going to find a lot of ladies that just want to do a lot of fucking and sucking. Right. There's nothing wrong with that. Fine with that. You- you'll-, you'll have that for a little bit, but after a while, I'll be like, I'm doing a lot of fucking and sucking. And it's kind of, <laughs> I would like something more in a relationship. Not necessarily You're saying marriage. I'm going to say that? Yeah, yeah. You're, you're the- <laughs> mark- okay. Mark my words. You're going to get tired of sex, Tim. <laughs> yeah, okay. Mark my words. Right. There'll be a time where it's like, I wish there was something more, but not necessarily yeah. marriage. And the lady will be like, I only want marriage. And you're like, oh, now I'll be uh, lonely oh. like Jason. Lonely. <laughs> I'm, I'm, you are my master. I, I, no, I'm happy whoa. to learn from you. And Jesus I, I, Christ, I, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> but I also I think you're probably right. But that is not. Yeah, it's, I, I'm very new to this. No, you, and that's no not you're, you're at a stage so right now where you 100 percent have fun. Enjoy it. Take it all in. And who knows? Over time, you might you might stumble upon a lady that is, uh, feels similar mm. to you about marriage and oh, shit. Oh yeah, that's yeah. So, Somebody that does not want to live together. Fucking go out there and I enjoy want a girlfriend it. I never have to see. Like that would be great. Yeah. No, I <laughs> uh, that actually be great? recently uh, <laughs> this uh, lady that I know contacted me and she said, "Hey, um, I was talking to this girl that I work with, and she says I'm interested in dating a guy about forty. I'm forty. And she said uh, she's uh, she wants to uh, keep um, like she doesn't want to move in and she wants to keep finances separately. And I'm thinking in my mind, I'm thinking that's everything I want. 
but in all, but behind my mind, I'm thinking that's fucking bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> that, she must that, be a lunatic if well, that's what well, she wants. It's, it's absolutely a. She's a lunatic. Or B, it'll change. It'll be like, I, I need to get married to this guy. And I'm like, I yeah. don't want that. So I was, and she said, I want to set you up with this lady. I was like, I don't I don't want to know. Yeah. So you really you think you think you're just done you're just done. For next couple of years for sure. Because years. Well, my daughter is sixteen. Yeah. I'm being very candid on this show, by the way. And, <laughs> usually uh, you're not. Yeah, I'm not I'm, I'm, I'm usually not this candid, honestly. And, I, um, I'm pulling it out of you. That's, that's fine. Well, no, Blake never asked me fucking <laughs> questions. He, he just wants to talk about this fucking weird looking cock all the time. Well, he's not dating you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but my daughter is at a point where it's like I'm, I'm almost like a, a grown up. Yeah, almost. And, and um, so, like, uh, my time with her is very limited. Right. And so, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm just trying to like take advantage of all that before she's fully like, hey, maybe I'll see you next month. Okay. Which, which honestly, is like. I, don't, I know your daughters are young, yeah. but like it honestly, it might, it seriously, like in all seriousness, might kill me. Like I might have, I seriously might have a heart attack and die when she gets, I'm not joking. It, like I seriously <laughs> might have some sort of cardiac or uh, health event after that because. You don't think she's had a boyfriend? No, no, she's had boyfriends and stuff. I'm just saying like when she finally says, you know, like, oh, I'm going to college. I'm, I'm oh. you know, I'm, I'm, I'll see you in like a month or two. Like yeah. I've never had that kind of break from her. That, that, okay. that really honest, genuinely 100% yeah. being serious might kill me. Yeah. And um, so I'm just trying to like take advantage of the time that I have with her while I have it. Right. Because we're still on great terms. We get along really We just went to see uh, Top Gun last night together. We had, she was like, we, we have a lot of fun together. We're, we're, we're great buddies but there will be a time when that doesn't happen sure and that's really going to it really will kill me i think yeah so um i'm not trying to waste my time with some fucking dumb dope lady <laughs> until then you know right I'm trying to enjoy my time with my daughter until i pass away and then after yeah. i die maybe i'll start dating <laughs> then we'll see yeah no, that, no, that, that's, you. that's my genuine take on it yeah no i i am you know with the divorce and everything yeah i was fine with the divorce i don't miss my ex-wife at all but the kids, yes, you're right. That was that was my main hang-up. That's why I stayed in that marriage for too long. It was like, I have to go three days without seeing my kids? Like, how am I going to do that? In the beginning, that was really tough for me. Yeah. But I, from the very beginning, I've had her every weekend. And, and I mean, every once in a while, you know, she's busy on a weekend or I'm busy and we skip. It doesn't happen a lot, but it, it was tough. Yeah. You, know, you go four or five days without seeing the kid. It mm-hmm. is tough. Yeah. So... I don't know. I, I feel for you going through this. It sounds like you, you're making your way through it pretty well. Yeah. Oh, I'm good. Yeah. I see my kids every day. They yeah. get off the bus with me every day. So even on my ex's Perfect. days, she p- picks them up. So yeah, I see them every day. That's great. So yeah. And they're, I, are, they, are they doing way. okay? We've talked a lot about Tim, but are the kids doing all right? Uh, yeah. I mean, they're yes, they're fine. I think they realized that we had a shitty sham of a marriage. <laughs> they're fine. They're, they're good. smart kids. Yeah. They're like, ah, oh, first I got sleep divorce, <laughs> and we put up with right. that for years. You're right. <laughs> How are we? Re- how are we even made? Yeah, <laughs> I'm, pu- I'm going to push. The, I'm going to push the envelope, Blake, and and I think I'm going to ask maybe a two personal question to Tim. Should I do it or not? Go oh, for do it. Do it. Do it. Has she, is she is she living with another guy? Not living with, but dating another guy. Yeah, it's the same guy that we had talked about before off yeah. mic. Yeah, that she's yeah. dating. Yeah, while we were still married. Yeah. Well, like officially, you were separated at that point, right? Yeah, we were separated, but yeah, she before say, the divorce. Do, do you know? You know the guy. I know the guy. Yeah, very do, well. Does it? Are you cool with all that? Do you like the guy? I, yes, I like him. I can't believe he stuck around this long. I cannot believe it. You, you, thought, feel, you, you thought he was smarter than that? Yes. Well, do you feel yes. like that she's a lady who shows her I'm crazy cards early and that would be enough to scare a guy off early? I, that's what I would have thought, yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know why he's still with her, honestly. Oh, well, women weird. have a vagina. <laughs> she, she does have one. I can confirm yeah, yeah. that she is one that does men have one. Men like that. I don't yeah, like some it. men like that. Some that's that's are, the first thing in my dating that. profile. I go to Bumble.com and I put uh, must-haves vagina. Yeah. What other filters do you have? None. None. No filters. <laughs> vagina Just only. Just vagina. Yeah. That's the only filter. I don't even click man or woman. Because to me, right. gender is fluid, of course. Sure. Of course. So I just put uh, vagina. That's, that's what I'm looking for. Smart. Very smart. <laughs> you can build one yourself with epoxy. And- <laughs> <laughs> Resin so expensive these days. <laughs> hey, you're damn right it is. It's difficult to get. All right, that's all I have for this segment. I'm sorry. No, that's great. Ladies and gentlemen. You've been a real trooper, Tim. Thanks, yeah. Open book, man. What do I care? And nobody listens to this show anyway. Well, who, 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 who that's are we kidding? probably pretty true. <laughs> All but right, that well. one guy in England's like, uh, I know about I know about that divorced guy in <laughs> central Illinois. <laughs> this is just the guys to hang out with people. Yeah. All right. Welcome to, of course, the summer of uh, uh, spinoffs. Summer of spinoffs. Remember this song? Yeah. Watch out, here I come. You spin me right round, baby, right round. 
Baby. Remember the name of this band? Do you know the name of this band, Tim? No. I would guess is, is it, it's not Duran Duran. No. no. No, I don't know. But you know the song. I do know the song. All I know is that to me. Yeah. Go ahead. Watch, 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 watch out. Here I come. come. It's uh, Dead or Alive. Ah, oh, damn it. I never would have gotten that in a million years. Damn it. I knew that. God damn it. Anyway, that's the little uh, song called Spin. So I this is another email for YouTube to send me. What is a spinoff? Okay, this is the summer of this is a whole season of only spin-off shows. What does that mean? A spin-off would be a if there was a character on a show and they were going to have their uh, there was plans for them to have their own show. Mm. That's the spin-off. Let's say uh cheers. Um uh uh Woody. <laughs> no, Frazier. No, Frazier. Frazier was a spin-off of Cheers. Yeah, yeah, Better call Saul. Uh, Better Call Saul was a... Uh, Are you watching that? Love Better Call Saul. Shh, you watch shh, Better Call Saul? Shush your mouths. Don't say this anything. This last episode. Shh, don't say anything because Amazing I... You know what? Fucking catch up. No, I can't. I can't watch it. I don't. There's no way for me to watch it. Yeah, there is. No, there's not. You go to uh, AmazonPrime.com and you subscribe. I have Amazon Prime. And then on there, you, for $5 a month, you can add on AMC. And that's how I've been watching the newest episodes. Mm. I'm all caught up. I think it comes back in July. Yeah. July. But that, well, that's a tremendous program. Absolutely. It's Don't say anything, please. We're not going to say We're not going to fucking ruin it. I'm just it for saying you. it's good. That's but, but, all. Of course it's good. So, Frasier, that's a good example of a spinoff. Um, I would. That's another one. Uh, uh, Give us like 15 more. <laughs> well, I, I just. Uh, there's so many of them. <laughs> I named the one I had. That's Joey all I from got. Friends. Remember? Yeah. <laughs> that's, right. yeah. that's right. Yeah. No, yeah. But there's like. Uh, like uh, there's famous ones like. Uh, wasn't there a spinoff for. Golden Girls? Golden Girls. What was that called? Empty Go- Nest. Yeah, yeah. And then Golden... And the dog's, the dog's name was Rufus. And then what? Golden Palace. I, yeah. I knew that one weirdly. How did I know about Golden Palace? I think... Probably from this show. That's also, that's also a sexual maneuver that Blake does. <laughs> oh, while, while the dogs are in the bed. It, it, only a picture it, of it, it, it involves tonight, glass. <laughs> it involves a glass tube. Oh, I don't know. I'm not prepared then. You just got to have one hole. The one side has to have a hole drilled in it. Otherwise, big problems. <laughs> it involves a glass tube. <laughs> no, but it it, 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 it it takes a character from an existing show and, 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 and spins off into their own show or a show adjacent to that. Mary Tyler Moore show? Yeah. Wasn't that a spinoff of some shit? Of Rhoda? Rhoda. Right, is it? Yeah. Yeah, there's a, there's a, a lot Remember of that? Rhoda, like Rhoda, Rhoda, Rhoda. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, there's a lot of examples of spinoffs, a lot, most, a lot of successful ones that we know, but many that we don't, and that's what we're talking about this season. <laughs> ones that were like uh, fucking shit. Yeah, right? we have an established show, yeah. and we're going to try to earn, uh, make money off of it by spinning off to another one, and we're going to... One and done. We're going to see the, at the bottom of the bucket. Fits the uh, couch pilot's criteria, as it were. Yes, which, uh, uh, Tim, do you want to go over the criteria? There's four this year. This is a little two. early, okay. but I think we should let them oh, do it. Oh, sorry. For this season, uh, not year. Right. It's available to watch. Yeah. It's hold, free. Hold, hold on. Whoa. So, you're so fast. Let's we'll say it again. <laughs> it's available to watch for free. Uh, it's a pilot that never went to series, and it's a spinoff. There you go. Can you believe we've been doing this for 35 years, Jason? Nailed it. It seems longer than that. <laughs> Thank you. You are correct. Yeah. My pleasure. Today, we discussed the pilot episode of Assignment Earth. From the year of our Lord, 1900 plus 68. Great year. 1968, I would have been negative 7. Mm-hmm. And it would mean you would have been negative 13. Look at him on the math. Tim, you Someone's would, not drinking. Tim, <laughs> Tim, you would have been negative 12? 11. Yeah. 11, that's close. I mean, we're not that good of friends. I mean, I don't know your exact age. <laughs> the, sp- the spinoff in question is from the original, uh, what's that guy's name? Kirk? Captain Kirk? William Shatnar? Yeah. Star Trek, the original Star Trek. Ugh. This is a spinoff from Star Trek. Yeah, I'm so pissed I had to watch an episode of Star I'm Trek sorry. to be so on this show. I'm, 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 I'm just happy that I'm going to hashtag Star Trek and watch to get some downloads. Until oh, that, these, that's, until, how, that's how it's going to work? That's how it's going to work. But then I'm, they're going to start talking shit about it, and then they're going to give us negative reviews. <laughs> well, let's go. Uh, to, in order to properly understand Assignment Earth, let's go back to 1968. In, in our, our minds. minds. And to do so, we'll talk about things that happened that year so we could properly understand, digest, and eventually at the end of the show, regurgitate a number in association with when this pilot was made. Because to do it any other way would be uncivilized. Isn't that right, Blake? Yeah. Just like Brute by Fabergé. Thank you very much. 
Um, let's talk about some things that happened that year. June 3rd, radical feminist Valerie Solanas Jesus. shoots Andy Warhol at his New York City studio, The Factory. He survives after a five-hour operation, after which he is forced to wear a surgical corset. Hmm. He was, the, he was the weird painter guy, right? Pop art. Yeah, yeah with the, pop art. the uh, Campbell soup can. Yeah. He, he said, let me use three colors to paint one thing, and then I'll switch the colors, and I'll make four more copies of it, and then you give me a million dollars. Yeah, he also did weird like experimental films. Like He just would record somebody sleeping for eight hours, and that would be a movie. <laughs> He's a weird dude. Or a lazy guy. Or that too, yeah. <laughs> when you open a Smart place called though. Factory and just have people like produce like art like it's a fucking sweatshop. <laughs> right. And you sit back and slam checks, it might be uh, Smart though. Smart. Smart guy. but lazy. Smart guy. Yeah, that's that's capitalism, baby. He's he's the greatest American uh, art capitalist of all time, Andy Warhol. That's probably true. He, uh, he did not die as a result of this shooting. He would go on to live uh, a little while longer, but this uh, the injuries that he sustained during the shooting would plague him the rest of his days. Did she get arrested or anything? Yes, she was arrested. What was her reasoning? I mean, um, she was a feminist, obviously. I, Duh. What, Duh. I, what I remember... He was a dude. That's yeah. all you need. I think, I'm going to shoot you because you're a dude that likes to make cable soup art. <laughs> I think she had written um, like a screenplay. For like a movie or maybe even a television program. And he said, I don't like it. And she said, I'm a girl. You have to like everything I do. <laughs> well, that might be it. I, I, I heard a different take on it. Um, he Apparently, he had uh, he had uh, received it somehow. Maybe he was going to review it. And then he like didn't give it back or something, basically. Hmm. Anyway, she's like, hey, that's my shit. Then I'm going to shoot you. <laughs> Why didn't you just say, can I have it back? She probably because girls don't think that way. It's, she's it's, a it's, lunatic. It's, she's it's, a feminist. It's zero to a thousand thing. miles an hour. There is no in the middle. You named it. Uh, June fifth, assassination of Robert F. Kennedy, U.S. presidential uh, candidate Robert F. Kennedy, is shot at the Ambassador Hotel in Los uh, Los Angeles. Sirhan Sirhan is arrested. The assassin so nice they named him twice. Right? That's a joke I made up. What is hilarious? <laughs> don't you wish that someday? Don't you wish that someday that like the shit about the Kennedys would all just come out? Like, like everybody thinks of JFK as like this amazing person, and he probably did do a lot of good things. I would say he probably, but he was also fucking chicks while he was married. He was addicted to drugs because of, he was addicted to drugs. You why know, do you, Why do you think he was addicted to drugs? Oh no, it's no he yeah it, it's um. Oh, I forget what it was that, but the, the, the doctor, that doctor used to keep injecting him all the time. Zayas, Doctor Zayas. You, you know what I'm talking about, right? Not exactly. I know that he, I read. I heard. Listened to a podcast about it, and it's like this doctor was like famous. Did a lot. You know, got a lot of people. I think what happened yeah. was is JFK. Like some shit came out about him, and then Bill Clinton was like, "What if I did that exactly?" <laughs> I just. <laughs> Who do you think killed JFK? <laughs> Honestly or jokingly? Like honestly. But, it was the government. It was the CIA. Well, so? he had uh-huh. Lee Harvey Oswald in the book Depository right. shooting what can only be um, described as a one in a billion shot, right? Yeah. And then you probably had a couple other guys shooting at him, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it was the CIA. You think it was the CIA, too, Jason? Or the FBI or some I don't, government, I don't give a something fuck. earlier? You don't care? All I'll say is I'm sure it's not how it's been presented to us. Yeah. That, that's all I can say. But I, I after all this time, why, 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 why hasn't somebody blown the whistle? Like, why, why haven't somebody, like, how, why haven't papers, like, you know. Like how they're saying now there's UFOs that we know about? Kind of like that shit, how they're <clears> revealing <throat> stuff to us now. But you know what I mean, And though? there was a Kevin Costner movie that revealed a lot. Oh, that's about true. JFK? <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Oliver Stone presents. Yeah. That's huh. all right. Yeah, anything Oliver Stone makes, I'll watch. Oh yeah, <laughs> did he do one about Rocky? Oh yeah, he did the he did the first three Rocky films. He says no more after Clubber Lang. I'm done. <laughs> I just, I'm sorry, I just no, it's fine. I want, that, that, I want I just that kind of stuff. Was like, why? How is it possible that this family had so many people tragically die and 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 so much and like why hasn't Chappa somebody Whittwick? Just... what's that what, what Chappa Kidwick or what's the uh Chappa Whittick Chappa Wh- yeah where it's basically Ted Kennedy is like what if I drive this lady into this lake and she'll die yeah right and, and then, then like nothing fucking happened to and me. then I'll be a senator for the next 45 years right. until I drink myself to death <laughs> yeah. and, I, and, I'll, I, and I'll go ahead and I'll sign over my life son and I'll just put him in an airplane where he just miraculously crashes into you know well we talked oh, about so you think that uh, was that was also a setup oh of course it had junior, oh, you think junior so. thing Oh, Maybe man. so. He was, well, that's he was, why a lot of people didn't like John Denver. That's what happened to him. He was the toast of New York City that JFK Jr. was, and then he died. Yeah. 
Who's famously on an you episode have to, of Seinfeld, right? You have That's to pay. Right. You have to pay the piper eventually, mostly in politics. It might not happen the way we think it will, but I, you know. Answer this honestly, Blake. I would. I would shoot Ted Cruz today if I could. Are Are you <laughs> Are you deep throat? I. I've had it done to me. Right. <laughs> you gotta be, you gotta be careful. How, you gotta be careful how you say that sentence. <laughs> will you, will you deep throat in front of us? Is what I'm asking. Uh, June twelfth, the horror film Rosemary's Baby premieres in the United States. Great movie. You're a, hor- a horror film aficionado. We probably mm-hmm. talked about it on the show before. Yeah. Um, do, do you rank it up there as one of the all time greats? No, it's not one of my favorites. The sixties ones are tough for me. It's just like the the way they were shot and stuff. Like the tone of them is very weird. Um, so I did I enjoyed the movie, but it's does this fall this falls in like America's um, fascination with the occult? Mm-hmm. What you say? I think so. Yeah, her, she raised it was like her baby was like a monster, right? If, if memory serves. Yeah, like a like a cult yeah. had, had got together and said, "What if we uh, like." Like put Satan in this lady's womb or something mm-hmm. like that. I don't remember the exact, but it's 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 fucked up. You know, like yeah. Led Zeppelin and all like uh, kids. And Living Color, Living Color, of course, my favorite uh, TV show and black uh, rock band, <laughs> black metal band. Thank you, I, Living I Color, another one. spinoff, right? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that a Cosby Show spinoff. That's right. <laughs> They had a different world and also living color. That's right. Oh, them. shit. God damn it. <laughs> Remember how the Waynes brothers were all friends with... Uh... <laughs> now I sound like a racist. All black people TV shows are all the same. No, you're not racist. Jim Carrey was on that In show. In 1968, oh, true, yeah. they made a black TV show, and then every black television show since then were spinoffs of that one. Yeah. That's what Tim said. I think that's what, I don't that's, agree that's what I'm meaning to say, yeah. Um, why did we choose to watch... We, we already did cover this. You said yeah, I, I jumped, on, I jumped the gun. Fine. I was excited. They can rewind it and listen to those reasons. Yep. That's fine. Where can you find the entire episode of Assignment Earth, the spinoff of Star Trek? Where can you watch that for yourself? You're probably asking. Well, you can do so in SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or your favorite podcast app of choice, and then simply click on one of our classically blue links in our show notes or download the app for Daily Motion. Blake? Uh, and have a pain in the ass time trying to watch the damn show. Oh. Daily Motion is the worst. Did you download the app for Daily Motion? No. Well... That's why, I, that's why I had so, so much commotion. How did you watch it? On your phone? Yeah. On just like the web? You went to the website. Browser thing? Yeah, okay. The website's a nightmare. Yeah. There's an app for it, though? Well, that's why Is it on my Roku? I, I literally say here, or download the app for daily motion. Is it on my Roku? It's on your... No, it's not on the Roku. It's not, <laughs> I, I still have to do it on my phone. It honestly used to be on Roku, but it's not... Any, you can't find that channel on there anymore. Okay, yeah. but I, I can download the app from the App Store. But I still can't watch it on my TV. You that, you that's can't. your own fucking fault on not knowing how your phone and TV works with mirroring things from your phone. That's That shit's on you, my friend. That's what I was going to ask. Did Android do that? It mirrored? 100%. That's how I watched it. Yeah, okay. Because you got an iPhone, because you're yeah. a civilized human being yeah. like me, right? <laughs> right. Uh, but absolutely you can mirror from your smartphone or your TV. I don't understand it. It doesn't work. you got to figure but, it out, man. But you're not going to put any effort in to try to understand it, right? <laughs> like, be honest about it. He's just gonna bitch about it not working properly. That's that's the that's the where we have nestled in. Yeah, you're acting at, like a woman at like. 47. That's what I do. Get off my lawn! I can't make this go into my TV. Somewhere the pilot. What are you gonna do about it? Not a damn thing. <laughs> While back in time observing Earth in 1968, the USS Enterprise crew encounters the mysterious Gary Seven, who has his own agenda on the planet. Blake, you want to uh, grade that? I, I'll give it a B. I mean, it. it I, when they say own agenda, it just kind of like leaves it wide open. But I understand it's a summary. So, do, do you care to agree that as well, Tim? Thank you, uh, Blake, for your hey, no problem. Uh, B plus. Oh. I just want to. I just want to come in a little above Blake. That's one all. upper. Yep, that's what I do. There's a lot of people that come in above me. <laughs> interesting facts, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to interesting facts. This is the part of the show where Jason has scoured the internet to find out facts about this show that you may not know. Please don't taint someone else's experience. Enjoy these facts, but don't share your opinion with these facts. You don't know what hard times are, Daddy. I think Blake's going to go to the bathroom. Godspeed. I'm so glad he's going to the bathroom because I kind of have to go, but I didn't want to be the first one. Now yeah, it feels like the pressure's off a little bit. Sometimes, uh, if it's just him and I, and he leaves, like I have to talk to nobody. I heard that last episode you did that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry you had to listen to any episode. <laughs> Interesting facts. Um, before we get started, actually, with this portion of the story, let me just say for this, that Star Trek fans are for real. Star Trek fans do not funk around. 
the pure, unadulterated knowledge and facts available for just this one episode of uh, Star Trek boggles my mind. Really? There are easily a whole season worth of Couch Pilots interesting facts available just for this episode. No shit. That's not a joke. I, I looked it up, and it's just on IMDb alone has a, just a myriad of facts. Uh, but of course, I will uh, only be picking the most worthy of these facts to present to you because despite, uh, contrary to popular belief, um, we do not have all day here. You don't love hearing yourself talk enough to just read through them all? Well. Like speed read? Get out of my head. <laughs> uh, the pilot was originally written as a standalone half-hour television series, and when no uh, network chose to order a pilot, the script was reworked to fit into Star Trek as a backdoor pilot, something you said recently to me, yeah. uh, for the proposed assignment Earth series. The spinoff was never uh, produced. Fact. Two characters from the pilot, Gary Seven and Roberta Lincoln, appear in the Star Trek novels, such as Assignment Eternity Star Trek, uh, The Eugenics Wars, The Rise and Fall of Khan Noonien Singh, and From History's Shadow. In the short story Seven and Seven by Kevin Hosey, uh, Gary Seven teams up with Seven of Nine from Star Trek Voyager. Fact. Oh, my God. It, 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 that sounds like a lot. You have no idea how, yeah. how deep this shit goes. The name Roberta Lincoln is a feminine version of Robert Lincoln. Robert Todd Lincoln was a lawyer, politician, and businessman who had a long career and was present or at or near the violent deaths of three U.S. presidents, Abraham Lincoln, his father, James A. Garfield, and William McKinley. In Assignment Earth spinoff series, Gary Seven and Roberta Lincoln would have been in business of rescuing people from assassination. Wow, like Quantum Leap. Fact. Yeah. Who, who would you want to be in Quantum Leap? Would you want to be Sam Beckett, played by Scott Bakula, or the Dean Stockwell ca- character, Al, who just wants to fuck anything that's not nailed down? Like, yeah, kind of like you, where you are right now. <laughs> that's right. Oh, I'd go Al for sure. Not because oh, of the yeah. fucking the women, but like his job's easier. He just gets to kind of pop in and say some things, and then he still gets to go home. If and... Sam Beckett dies, uh, uh, Al would be like, oh, that sucks. Uh, what's on TV tonight? That's right. You know, he just gets to go home. What, who would he talk to back at the... Base Quiggy or something. Squiggy? Yeah, it was. It was something with a Q. Yeah, like and it Michael was like... McKeon from uh, Rhoda Squiggy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Laverne yeah. Shirley. And it was. Yeah, it was just a, like that little handheld computer thing. I used to love that. It show. looked like. Um, it looked like something. Um, what was that? Uh, Gene. Um, uh, Charlie the Chocolate Factory. It looked like something fucking Willy Wonka would make that Al was holding. It was like this right. delicious clear gobstopper thing, right. wasn't it? And with like bright colors on it, like oh, little yeah. lights or something. Yeah, you remember Quantum Leap, Blake? Not, not that well. I mean, I remember the show, but not that well. You know that Al was horny though, right? My, my kind of guy. Dean Stockwell was, uh, he was told every day to show up with an erection on set. Huh. And a very flowy, silky shirt. Oh yeah, you want nice. to see you want to see his pronounced ridge. Yeah. <laughs> This episode takes place in 1968 along with Star Trek Enterprise Stormfront from 2004, which takes place in 1944. This is one of only two Star Trek episodes to take place entirely in the 20th century. Furthermore, both episodes take place mostly in and around New York City fact. New York City? Get a rope. Gene Roddenberry would later rework key elements of this story in Agent to Earth by Aliens to Shepherd Humanity out of its childhood with help from a human into another unsuccessful pilot entitled The Questor Tapes, which we watched. Yes, we did. From 1974, with the agent being an android. I don't remember that portion of it, but I remember The Questor Tapes. Remember the guy who had lost or something, and someone was listening to his tapes that he had recorded? Right. Oh, yeah. It, that was like a, it was like a horror one. Like It was. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, probably occult in nature as well. It was very occulty. Terry Garr had such an unpleasant time filming this episode, she refused to ever talk about Star Trek again, although she did do an interview with Starlog magazine many years later in which she was very disparaging of both the show and its fans. <laughs> One reason uh, was Gene Roddenberry's frequent clashes with costume designers over the length of Roberta's skirt. Roddenberry wanted it shortened to the extent that Mrs. Gar's underwear is glimpsed on occasion. She's fact. I, I saw my I, kind of guy. I was flipping through on the internet um, in MSN news. That's what I sure. And there was a thing of like, you know, why haven't we seen Terry Gar lately? Is she still alive? Like, why? I, I, She's alive. I think when ladies get older too, they, they become less desirable to be on the screen. Which I don't understand. My, why my, I think my a favorite place my her. favorite movie of hers is uh, Mr. Mom. It's a great movie. She was the husband. I mean, the wife of Tom Hank or uh, not Tom Hanks. Um, Batman. Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton. Birdman. That's right. Uh, a little editorial here. She was hot. She's a babe in that. Totally. Yo, in this, she's a super babe she's in totally this. Yeah. Young she's got Frankenstein. legs. She's got legs. She's I, great in Young Frankenstein. Final um, final fact here: the Spock mentions all the events. 
which are to occur on that date in the Enterprise, traveled back to time in the 20th century and met Gary Seven. Among the events mentioned was an important political assassination. As it turned out, there were ultimately two important political assassinations in 1968. Just six days after this episode aired, on March 29, 1968, Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. was shot and killed in Memphis, uh, Tennessee, on uh, April 4, 1968. And two months later, on June 6, 1968, Senator Robert F. Kennedy was also killed in Los Angeles, California, on the night that he won the California Democratic President primary and of interesting facts. So I'm assuming that since I'm going to Memphis this week and I have to go see, like, there's this probably a statue or something. Yeah, pour, pour are, one out. Are you telling you're, you're feeling <laughs> obligated to go do it? You don't have to. I'm just saying that, that there probably is one of those. You have right? to do that. You got to do it. Yeah, because suppose we were going on some kind of tour. That's cool, though. Yeah, I'm like, I go to Sun Records and, of course, I'll, I'll go, okay, hey, I'll stop at this statue. <laughs> if you can't gig it, we have one in Peoria, too. Just go to that one. Okay? He got shot, shot here, too? <laughs> yeah, both. Places. Holy yeah, cow. Very sad. Very bad luck. Guy. I need to learn my history. <laughs> the Reverend's so nice, he was assassinated twice. <laughs> Sir Han, Sir Han. Twitter responses. Twitter responses. Twitter responses. I wonder if Jason got some Twitter responses. Can't do it. No, they're all dead, except for William Shatner. And they, he's out of his fucking mind, right? I don't, I don't think so. I, I literally, just a few days ago, heard an interview with him, a one-on-one interview. The guy's got, like, every single one of his faculties about him. The guy is... Really? He's pretty goddamn sharp for, like, literally... I think, well, he, I think he's 91. He just went to outer space, too. Oh, yeah, he did go to outer space. You're right. He yeah. went to outer space. Well, did he go with Bezos or Musk? Bezos. Bezos. I think, yeah, I think you're right. The reason why he still has his wits of him mm-hmm. is because he's taken his time throughout his life to speak. Is that your, his words. Is that your impersonation? <laughs> yeah. How was it? Pretty good. Can you do a, can you do a um, Christopher Walken for us real quick? <laughs> <laughs> I like to save these for Christopher Walken pilots, though. Okay, but. okay, you don't have to do it. You don't have to do it. Let's put ten minutes on the clock, um, and that's ten minutes on this one. Th- th- this is like a forty-five, fifty-minute pilot, right? Wait, William Shatler. 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 Sh- Sh- I'm sorry. Shatler. Shat all over his name. On my fourth beer, I apologize. William Shatner is, uh, like I said, I think I believe him to be ninety-one years old, and uh, he's still still working today. He still looks like he doesn't look like a ninety-one-year-old guy. He's fat. Well, that, yes, yeah, I had that's an, part of it. It fills the wrinkles, and that's my strategy. If I just stay 100%. fat, I'm just, I'm always going to look the same. I had an uncle, and at like uh, fifty-seven, he's like, "I'm going to lose like a hundred pounds," and he did. <clears throat> and he looked like a fucking uh, California raisin after that. <laughs> right. Yeah, uh, that's fine. God bless him. He's a lot healthier now. But you're right. The the fat does kind of fill it in. It, it, he he looks like he looks. I know we've used this recently a couple times, but he looks like Joe Rogan. Like he's a sausage yep. about ready to burst. Right. But he, the, I mean, you kind of have to wager that versus looking like a goddamn California raisin, <laughs> yeah, right? It's true. Anyway, well, why don't you start us off? We're going to 10 minutes on the clock. Let's break down the pilot. All right. Well, we, we do the typical Captain Slog, Stargate, blah, blah, fucking blah, nerd, blah, blah, blah <laughs> stuff, right? And you yeah. see this. This model airplane flying past Earth, which makes no sense, and re- and then you hear and what was it? The Therian Therium? What's the name of that instrument? Theremin. Theremin. Theremin flew. That's how I remember it. Um, it you know, it's, it's it's the typical intro to uh, every Star Trek. This is you know, usually this is my turn it off. Yeah, you're not into nerdy stuff except for Dungeons and Dragons for some reason. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm, I'm just curious. I'm not into it. I'm just curious. I will take you being open minded and curious uh, versus you immediately going to I hate you, nerd. <laughs> oh, those can, are your two. Can notes. I be I hate you, nerd? Yeah, absolutely. All right. D and D sucks. Star Trek. Have, have you played D and D before? Played a few times in high school. Sucked. Yeah, I'm playing it's it right inv- now. It's advanced guys. a lot since you were in high school. I've never played it before, <laughs> and I, just a few months ago, I started with some guys, and we're just yeah. screwing around, having fun. It's over Zoom only. Yeah, nerd. Yeah, I, mean, it's fine. I, I I just can't. I, I I guess the thing that bothers me is I just can't. I, my hands shake too much. I can't paint those little itty bitty little bitty figures. None of us have painted anything <laughs> yet. <laughs> Blake, how do you feel about like fantasy movies? Lord of the Rings. You like I, Lord I, of the Rings. Yeah. I, I, it does nothing for me. Yeah. Um, Game of Thrones. No. no. Oh, I've never seen it. I, I same same questions. Um, I saw two completely random episodes of Game of Thrones, and then I was dating a lady, and she says I love Game of Thrones, and so we watched the whole last season together. I was completely nonplussed. I don't give a shit about it at all. Yeah, 
Lord of the Rings? Um, when it came out, like twenty years ago, I watched it, and I, I thought I thought there were good, well made films, but I have never revisited them since then. And I, I just I don't think I give a shit about the the fantasy genre. And yet no. you play D and D, which is all of the fantasy genre. But it's us, just me and my friends hanging out, having fun. I didn't know Peter Jackson, so I can't say watching those films, I was having a good time with Peter Jackson. Though, <laughs> do you have all the dice? No, I went when I went to Madison recently. My friend bought me dice, but I was too drunk to remember to uh, take them with me. Well, how do you play if you don't have any dice? Somebody rolls it's, for it's, you. It's a website. You click on a thing. It's a it's a randomizer uh, oh. dice thing online. That's super nerdy. Well, yeah, this you, don't is, even, you don't even have the cool dice. I know, this just keeps getting worse, doesn't it? Every time we you do it on anything, Zoom, it's like, oh, we do it on Zoom. Oh, that <laughs> with sucks. The Wait, I don't have a dice. Oh, that fucking sucks. I don't have little characters to paint. Oh shit! <laughs> what the fuck are you even doing? What are you doing? Well, fuck. I will say that it is all in my mind. <laughs> I am a level 37 golem, and I have a super, super spell and a super, super sword. And when it, when, when I roll 37. We did go to a shop at once in, in, our, in our heads. We went to the shop in this town, and the shopkeeper took us in the back and showed us his cock. And I was like, I, was like, I don't think that's part of the game. Yeah, that, sounds, that sounds exactly like D&D guys to me. That, that was my friend as a, a dungeon master having a little bit too much fun with it. Anyway, um, the, on the Enterprise, they almost immediately have problems as someone or something is attempting to board or beam on their ship. It's a man dressed in 1968 attire with a black cat. He seems very angry. It, he, yeah, he is angry. And uh, this cat has a, a, a cool little necklace on, uh, not a normal collar. And throughout this episode, this cat like uh, helps him fight people, <laughs> has conversations with him. This, this cat is a character. Yeah, it's going to be involved. And I remind, remember on uh, uh, Inspector Gadget, the bad guy had that cat. Dr. Claw. Yeah. I don't remember the cat's oh, name. Oh, Gadget. I'll get you, Gadget. I'll get you next time. But I was like, Gadget. okay, this is what this is. Like, this is this is a bad guy, or this is a guy, and this is going to be his thing. And, yeah, so the alarm goes off because somebody's getting beamed up there. Yeah. And supposedly they accidentally intercepted this beam. He was beaming from one place to another. And yeah. he, they accidentally intercepted it. Beaming seems like inconvenient now. It seemed like the best way to travel until this episode. And it's like, wait, what the fuck? You can just end up on a spaceship randomly? Well, that be- sucks. Beaming, I think, was first introduced into the American lexicon uh, via Star Trek. Yeah. But like it, since then, you know, there's been a lot of talk of, like uh, teleportation, not unlike uh, what Gold, uh, Jeff Goldblum and the, the fly, fly and that kind yeah. of shit. What what is as we attempt to understand it in this day and age, what is teleportation? Is it instantly killing Tim? Uh, Tim, you are dead. Right. But it's okay because we've replicated you, and what we've replicated will now show up in this other spot. Is right. that is that what teleportation is, killing you and replicating you? I've had that same thought because what it, cause there'd have to be a fraction of a second where there's two of you, right? What if what if one of the machines breaks and then it's just like the unit? There's just like two, two of you of just you. walking around. Yeah. Well, but, but but is that is that how teleportation would work? Killing one person and having them show up in another spot with all the same thoughts and yeah. memories as you. Yeah, I think it would have to. It would have to like duplicate molecule by molecule, right? Like rebuild a new one. So the idea and of then taking you, you and like somehow literally like zapping you to where you like disappear and then that same person show up over there. It's an impossibility. You right. we are killing you. And having another one of you replicated over here, right? right. And, and you know, you mentioned Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory. That I mean, that happened. You know, he he Mike had, TV, yeah, and the, yeah. So, but he, he was smaller. He couldn't make him any bigger. That's the problem. But, uh, also, there's a part a part in that where like he was like he was like little dots Dust, yeah, like, going right. over their head. Mm-hmm. That yeah. I would like to think that I'm not dying and showing up somewhere else, but somehow my my particles are being zoomed, but that's, I can't imagine what somebody, that even looks like. Because when, when that's going, if somebody sneezes, <laughs> you yeah. show up with a booger rectum. <laughs> <laughs> Your left leg will be just a bunch of snot. <laughs> Can they rearrange some of the molecules on their way? Like, give me big biceps, like a smaller belly, bigger biceps. Oh, I, was, I was thinking stuff. about David Cronenberg, uh, like body horror shit. But you're talking about <laughs> muscle building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Why not? Yeah. I want to be a better version when I arrive and wherever I beam to. So it, random it, spaceship. If we find out, it's 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 Gary Seven is the guy's name, right? And um, he looks is, like Daniel Craig. Did you guys see that? Huh? A lot of these guys back then, if they're looking dapper, they fucking look like James Bond. Yeah, in any form, I love it. Wearing suits and shit. I love this whole mid-century aesthetic. I love. Yeah. So. Um, 
this interfere. Oh, so some he says something about interfering with uh, destroying Earth or something. And so Captain Kirk and Spock and our side, they, they they take this guy. They start to take this guy into custody because they don't know whether to believe him or not because they don't know if he's an alien or what he is. He says he's an alien from a different planet living on Earth, right? Right. He's got he's from a secret planet. And he won't tell him where he's from, right? And Kevin Kirk, you don't if you don't tell him all the facts, he don't like that. He he's unsure of this guy's motives, right? Yeah. So they start to t- take him, and then there's a, like a fight scene, and like the cat like can beat people up too. Hell yeah. And then there's a stun gun. Yes, uh, Kirk, Kirk zapped him. I feel yeah. like he stopped mid sentence. Yeah, uh, Kirk zapped him, and then uh, the uh, Spock is stroking the cat. So the cat is easily subdued by petting. Yeah, I have. He says that he is strangely drawn to the cat, and I was. I kept wondering why. Like, right? They so made they, a point to n- mention that. Like, why then, is he drawn to it? They yeah, but then I don't much. think that, that later on it. They they, they kind of for the, for the right price. I'd eliminate that cat for him. I don't yeah. Know. Do you think he wants to fuck the cat? Uh, maybe. I, I don't know what they do on the Vulcan planet that Spock's from. <laughs> they have similar ears. Maybe he's into that. That's, that's true. Twenty years abound. So uh, you know, uh, you know, they get him into custody, right? And then, and then Spock says, uh, not Spock, but Kirk says uh, he wants uh, all the departments to give a report. Like every department on the SS Minnow or whatever the fuck this thing is called. Mm-hmm. Like how are Skipper they? Skipper two. Yeah, like they're gonna have a medical report and then a report from the. The beaming guys, and then there's a report. It just didn't make any sense. Basically, they say, everyone divert all of your attention to this man. Right. We want to learn about We're this in stuff. space. We're flying in space. But hey, everybody, let's pay attention to this guy. Let's not wear No, I don't even pay attention to where we're going. And for whatever reason, the USS Enterprise has traveled back in time, which in the interesting back facts in time. is like this is only the second time ever that they that this would happen in the series. And they're there because they're worried about, in this time period, nuclear holocaust. Right. Nukes floating around in space. Is that happening now? Do we have nukes floating in space right now? I always feel like I think we have the satellites to 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 direct the nukes. Yeah, I don't know if they're in space, like go, just like hanging around, floating around the Earth. But I, when I think about nuclear warheads, I always think about a guy pressing a button and then like a completely nondescript field, like a, a some door opens yeah. and they come yeah. out of the ground. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, we have. I have to have them hidden. There's no sign that says nuclear bombs here. I thought, did you have that sign in your needle exchange? <laughs> That's right, yeah. Okay. So maybe, maybe give that over to Blake. It just has an arrow pointing up. <laughs> yeah. So Seven is kept in a cell with a force field, but he's got this device in his pocket, and apparently it does whatever he thinks. It's like Green Lantern. He can make it do whatever he wants whenever he wants. Yeah, I, call it, I, I, I just call it the pen device. It looks like a pen. It does. He uses it not only to remove the force field, but he uses that exact same device to make um, his no-name captor sleepy. Just some dude standing there watching the yeah. cell. My yeah. note says that it can turn off lights and people. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, and throughout this whole it does. throughout this whole episode, it, it makes people smile and then fall asleep. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Like that, that was the oddest point. Like they had this big shit eating grin. He's like, just be you know, like be happy and take a nap. Right. I'm like, well, what? It's very friendly. Yeah, that's. I'd like to be put to sleep like that. Um, <laughs> like for good. <laughs> I mean, maybe he they look happy. There's worse ways to go. Yeah, amen to that. The brother. cat escapes, and then meanwhile, Seven puts everyone in his way asleep. And I, I'd like to think we can take Seven as a force for good, as he's not killing anyone. So that's kind of like a thing in his favor that he's not murdering people. When it, it, yeah, but we still don't know anything about. But if you have this device, like if it could do almost anything, like it. He well, could, so he did Will Smith. Kill so does Will Smith. He still smack Chris Rock. <laughs> You talking about his Men in Black <laughs> device? Yeah. Okay, all right. Well, Chris Rock should have let his name. Out of his fucking mouth, or whatever. <laughs> his wife's whatever, name. He, whatever the fuck out he said. Out of his motherfucking right. mouth. We've Should talked it? about this plenty on the show, and Blake and I stand behind Will Smith. <laughs> <laughs> that he collects the ISIS, which is the name of his cat, and also like a, a, a jihad organization, I believe, in the Middle East. Um, and he beams out of there. He leaves. Yeah, he, he has the ability to beam on his own. That's pretty yeah, impressive. It, it, I wish I could to do that too. I wish he'd beam the hell. So out he there. beams him. He's he's in an office, and it, it, it took me a second to realize that. Like, is this his office, or is this like an office like that he's just going into? Because he's looking around, he knows where everything is, but it's not like it. It, it, it just seemed like it, it. It was awkward. I didn't know if it was like his office or where he was living, or where, he was, he, or a, where he was supposed to go and meet somebody. And then him and uh, this is where we meet uh, with uh, Terry Gar, and she looks like a, she looks very sixties in this. Uh, we don't know if it, it seems like he doesn't know her kind of at first, right? right? He, has right. A, he has a weird interaction. Yeah, yeah it doesn't make sense. Comfortable with I don't other, know yeah. what to think of this situation either. But he comes into that office uh, in a vault where he, his beaming machine, 
and uh, behind a bar, which is awesome. Yeah, yeah. and uh, the uh, by the way, the vault you can just easily open. We we'll find out later. <laughs> you just can easily no combination open. or yeah, you yeah. just spin the thing and it opens. Yeah. He also has a massive uh, computer hidden behind a wall, and he says that the people outside are primitive. So the, if he, if not, if he's not a crazy guy, then he probably is an alien from some other place. And is how about this fucking computer? That shit's that shit's primitive, right? Oh yeah, there's not even like. Anything graphics or anything on the screen, it's just little squares of light. It's all black with AF, just light like it's fucking DOS or something. He talks to it, and again, very primitively, it, it talks back in a woman's voice. Not, not unlike Siri, I suppose, right? Yeah, very uh, future-focused here. And you guys missed, there was a, there was a um, reference to uh, Omicron. Did you catch that? Oh, uh, I may, uh, refresh <clears throat> us. I don't, I, all my note just says Omicron 4, then question you, mark. Then you have refreshed us. What's, what, what's Omicron 4? Well, Omicron is a variant, of course, of the uh, the COVID nineteen. Oh, you didn't hear about that one? <laughs> I, that's it's kind the, of a big deal. That's the one I got. Did you get? Did you ever get COVID? I'm pretty sure I did. You actually got confirmed COVID. Yeah, I was gonna go to a birthday party. Yeah, and then I was like, I I'm feeling a little tired. I, I'm you know just before I go to the party, I'll check, and it says you have it, and I was like, I feel fucking fine. But yeah, I, I missed the birthday party because of it. But I got like I went to Walgreens. I got a test. Yeah, was that in the height of Omicron? It was the. It was like uh, January. Like beginning of January. Well, did they mean it in the same context? No, no, no. It was. I don't know. It was just a word. Context a, was, a, yeah. a funk, funky word for like a mission or something. Yeah, but they said Omicron four, and I was like, "Fuck, we're gonna do this three more times with this Omicron <laughs> shit." That fucking sucks. Gary is trying to get information from the computer, but it's denying him access until he proves like what he is or what his. That's why I didn't is. understand if it wasn't his office or not. Because like, if it was his office, he'd get. He'd get... I think it is his office, but ultimately what this is is basically he's the the show is forcing an exposition dump so we right. as the viewers get information and uh, <laughs> I wrote down the computer has a sassy mouth <laughs> like she the computer kind of gets sassy with him yeah. when he's trying to like override it and she's like fuck you you're not I'm not overriding shit it says um, to prevent earth from destroying itself that's what that's his mission he says technology on earth has moved faster than political and social policies. So things are not in balance on Earth. So this computer would be a big part of the show going forward, I think. And it, 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 it provides a certain amount of levity, too. Like, sure. like we're laughing at some of this weird shit that's happening. Anyway, the U.S. is about to launch uh, nuclear satellites to maintain the balance of power around the world. And Seven sees this as a foolish move and one that he is looking to stop. Right, because he knows it's going to cause problems. Yeah. And so his job is to stop it from happening. Then we get a, a shot of on the street. We get to see Spock and Kirk dressed in time-appropriate attire, which is something we probably will never see on that show mm-hmm. again. And they are tracking uh, Gary Seven. Yeah, they're, t- they're using they're you're tracking him to find out where he is. And the, the tracking is so precise that like they go go to this door and go up to the like the seventh floor and take thirteen steps to yep. the left. Yeah, they know exactly where he is. Uh, the computer creates fake paperwork for seven to gain access to highly confidential government areas. Roberta arrives, and this is Terry Gar, and she's pretty adorable, right? Oh, so sure. cute. Yeah. Ms. Ms. Lincoln, right? Her, That's her right. Lincoln. I, I don't understand what the relationship is at first, but uh, he tells her he needs to know everything she's done in the past three days, and he does something. Three so Earth she, days. Because she, right, he Earth thinks days. she's an agent because he's missing a couple agents. Eight, not Asian. <laughs> Agents. But Blake loves to blurt out my uh, porn search <laughs> terms during the show. I don't know why he does that. Missing Asians? Yeah, yeah, that's your thing? Yeah, yeah. I love I love Asians in distress. <laughs> yeah. That's why. They're always more cooperative. <laughs> um, no good massage parlor for you, Jason. Oh, boy. Uh, he does... Uh, Gary Seven does something so that the typewriter starts to automatically type everything she says. Right. That's kind of cool, actually. To, like, to make it easier for her as far as what she's done the past three work days, yeah, it is kind of cool. Yeah. It's just a cool trick, too. Uh, she gets frustrated, and she she says she quits her job. But then Seven's little metal device that he has, a little pen thing, it, it locks it like locks the door. And it also has like a green cube. that He's got like some sort of green cube that acts as, I think, like a mobile version of this computer. Right, yeah. And then his metal device, uh, essentially, it does whatever he needs it to do in the moment. Right, and so... Um... Oh jeez. Uh, oh, so uh, Kirk and Spock go into the building where they are and goes up there, and so uh, Terry Gar, uh, what, what's her name? What's her first name? Roberta. Roberta. She starts calling the cops. Yeah, she tries to stop him. Yeah, she tries to stop him, and um, I, I, it's at this point where they kind of they kind of get rough with her. They kind of yeah. You know, Seven takes off with his cat, and they kind of get rough with her, and I'm like, oh, we, we probably. 
it shouldn't even in the 80s, I guess, 60s. I probably not show that, right? Uh, Kirk blasts through the door they're trying to get through. He's got some sort of yeah, laser. They, they kind of fling her around, a and then bit. Spock is kind of like holding onto her so she uh, can't yeah. escape. And yeah, but Seven escapes from that scene without without being made. They yeah. don't they don't see him at all. And then he beams over to the rocket ship, the U.S. launch site. Yeah, yeah, the U.S. launch site. And this this scene at the launch site really takes a lot of time. It is a huge filler in my opinion. You're right. You're right. There, there's, there's a lot of lag time where it's, it's just... It's not just this scene, but there there are multiple shots which are, are it's either stock footage or we're just seeing kind of a lot of <clears throat> fancy business happening with, with nothing that results And from. later on I wrote down like when it, when it goes to take off, like when, it, when, the, when the rocket takes off, it reminded me of, remember when the rocket took off on MTV? It, I think it was like stock nah, footage... Nah. I nah, think it was nah, stock nah, nah. footage of the same thing. It, it was the angle been. and everything. Well, this is a McKinley rocket base, is what they call it. The police arrive at back at the office and uh, and beam Scott and Kirk and uh, also the policemen oops. as well. Yeah, I wrote oops. The, you know, they beam. So it, this beaming thing is just it. It seems like a great idea, but it's not like foolproof at all. I was gonna say it, it's it's chock full of errors. <laughs> There's a lot of mishaps that happen with beaming. Um, they send the cops right back to to Earth in 1960. But I guess the, I guess the USS Enterprise is in 1968 above Earth. They zap the men from Earth to the to the uh, Enterprise, and then they send them right back. Yeah, Can you imagine going home that night? He's like, hey, how is work there, Bobby? He's like, I went to fucking outer space. <laughs> Jesus right. Christ! Exactly. So we got about 50 minutes to launch. Um, so then. Oh. Seven briefly gets stopped by security, but he zaps that oh, guy yeah. again. It, it makes him smile and yeah. just lays him down gently. Yeah. And so the you know they 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 the seven and the cat are gonna go to this rocket and they're gonna sneak onto this rocket. Yeah. And they go up to the top of it and they're they're trying to disarm this this nuclear rocket, right? And so this big humongous rocket that's probably fifty stories high. Uh, just has one compartment toward the top where there's just a bunch of wires that that will, you know, turn this thing off. And the whole time the cat is meowing and Seven's having a conversation with him like, oh, you know, I, I got this. I'm going as fast as I can. Right? Yeah, there's a lot of that happening for sure. Um, so so Seven's up there trying to mess with that. And the meanwhile, uh, Spock and Kirk beam onto the McKinley base and they're stopped by a security guard. And then the control center, which is, is monitoring the launch, gets a word that there are intruders there. And then back at Seven's place, Roberta talks to the green mobile cube box thing, and she accidentally opens up that really cool bar that he has that has the uh, large safe behind it where uh, Seven beams out of. And then Terrible just, security, by the way. <laughs> and open that fucking it, thing, you just have to adjust a pen. Yeah, she yeah. accidentally <laughs> opens this? Yeah. yeah. Terrible security it's for something bad. very important. And I thought for sure she was going to get beamed somewhere. <clears throat> I thought he was going to come back and kill her. For finding out the secret. Twenty minutes to launch. Well, to me, I, I don't. If he could just beam to that uh, McKinley rocket base, why couldn't he just beam up to that literal beam that he was climbing <laughs> right. on? Like, why do you have to go through all the trouble of like sneaking getting, onto the yeah, elevator, and, subduing uh, guards, hiding in that guy's yeah. car trunk, and then you know, like, what? Just beam up to the thing. Yeah. Well, if the pen has these many superpowers, can he just like point the pen at the thing? You would think so. Yeah. Yeah, he wouldn't have to do all that wiring work. Right. So at the control center where Spock and Kirk were being questioned, it seems like a weird place to have um, intruders, like in the control center. Yeah, right, right, like yeah. a cell or something. <laughs> but it, it's probably a budget issue. It's like, we don't have any, we can't make another set. Just take them to the control center. So the Irish guy that's on, on the USS Minnow or whatever it's called, he keeps zooming into this rocket and sees Seven and the cat up there and uh, on a camera. And so then they beam him again. Up to the spaceship. Yeah. The cat, which the beam that he was on. They try anyway. They, well, they try. It doesn't work. Exactly. So they attempt to beam him up, and then whatever Roberta did with opening the safe, yeah. it stopped it and then sent him from the launch site. To his office. Back, to, yeah. All, all over the place. There's so much beaming going on. So much beaming. One minute to launch. Uh, and then Kurt, uh, Captain Kirk starts to narrate. Yeah. And then... Uh, then we see the launch, and you know the five, and that, this is where I look, it looked like the MTV footage. That's already noted. It really did like the old school, it's very just stock footage yeah. of a rocket launcher. Right. This well, this, back then they didn't have a whole bunch of them. This narration by Kirk, I think, is really important here. Actually, uh, we we get some narration from him, and he, and he says he feels helpless. 
and unsure what to do. This is the captain of a fucking ship. Right. It, this is. I mean, I know this, it might be a little goofy since it's Star Trek, but I feel like it's an important narration. He says, I, I think that their whole plan was to confront Seven and not necessarily stop him. They just want answers at this point. And Seven really may know some knowledge about the future or the outcomes of the events that they're experiencing and that they're interfering with. And Spock and Kirk just want to find out more. So given all of that, Kirk is unsure of how to proceed, and he's just kind of frozen in this control center while the countdown uh, continues. I, I I kind of found this whole situation profound, sure, personally. Uh, and then they you know they get beamed up, so they get beamed. There. Everybody's beamed to the office. Mm-hmm. So it's Spock, Kirk, uh, Ms. Lincoln, which that's how I like to pronounce Roberta her Lincoln. name. That's right. <laughs> She's a young lady. Respectful. And uh, Seven and the computer, they're all there, and they're like, "Hey, we're running out of time. There's one minute. We got to take control of this." And Kirk's like, I'm, I don't think I want to let him, you know? And then he's like, Spock, you try to figure out how to, like, stop this rocket. And Spock's like, doo, 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 doo. you know, I, I can't figure it out. And he says something profound that he, some stock sentence he always says. Seven even says, I'm trying to stop World War Three," Right? Right. Anyway, um, what happens next? They're, uh, they basically let Seven go ahead and do what he's right. got to do. Right, and he disarms it right, like, like. It was coming. The rocket was coming down and going to hit um, in um, China or something yeah. and start a nuclear war. They stop it just forty yards from. I'm like, eh, it's, I, it's pretty close. I was like, yeah, that's, that's cutting it kind of close. Um, and then uh, Mrs. Ms. Lincoln, she she knocks out Mister Seven. I think it was a little bit earlier. Um, um, I'm, but the, the mission, is, by all accounts, is successful. And then while laying out some final exposition, for whatever reason, we see oh. that, that Isis the cat is actually a sexy lady in leather. What is this? Very about? weird. Yeah, I put Elvira. She's like an Elvira ooh, cat. Yeah, yeah, very weird. Sandra Peterson. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. I put cat turns into a sexy girl. Why? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got to imagine they would ex- they would they didn't clear ex- this up they if didn't this ex- turned into a series. Yeah, they didn't explain why and why did she go back very quickly, go back to being a cat? Yeah, and I didn't catch it. Did anybody else see that she turned into a human? Anybody else in the room, I mean? No. 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 Nobody nobody the... noticed it until they turned around and saw her on the couch. Right. It, it is kind of uh, ex- briefly shown throughout the show, though, that uh, Seven and the cat Isis could, could like talk or communicate to each other, even though we never heard the cat speak. Barely, I don't know if we even heard the cat meow. Oh, we heard it meow. Because when, when, when it would fight, it would go, meow. Okay. Would fight. But it's never, it was never like English or words no, that we understood. But ap- apparently at the end was a lady, which I, I don't understand at all. That's fine. <laughs> um, but Scott, uh, Scott, Kirk and Spock beam out. They say, live long and prosper. And then that's, that's about the end. Yeah. What are you going to do? Please remain seated as we are now crossing a zone of turbulence. What, what do you got there? You got that lady coming over? Uh, maybe. Yeah. Possibly. We'll try to get you Probably. out of here. <laughs> Thanks. Right. What's, what's too late? Uh, no, no, no. Don't worry about it. Don't worry right. about we'll, it. We'll, we'll, we'll wrap it up by nine. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Assignment Earth. He's going to get it either way. <laughs> you, you, here's the thing, Tim. <laughs> she might be awake. She might be asleep. You're, yes. you're going to get it. Okay, Tim? <laughs> you know I'm going to get it. Um, Assignment Earth, the first in a series of ten that we'll do this summer of spinoffs. Why didn't this show work? It was Star Trek. <laughs> you hate Star Trek. Yeah, it's weird. I can't. I, when I watch any episode of Star Trek, I think, why Why did they make this show? Why was Who's it so, watching this why thing? Why was it so popular? Yeah, this is ridiculous. And there's been tons of spinoffs and stuff. Um, Movies. Yeah, none of them are for me. I don't like any of them, but obviously they have a, obviously some people like them. I, I think they don't really, like, they don't announce that this is a spinoff. You know what I mean? Like, to me, this, they don't say this is to the viewer. They don't say this is going to be a spinoff. Mm-hmm. So I think it, it, to Trekkies, right, they just, it's just another nerdy episode. Yeah, but, but it is very clear that they're focusing on this Gary Seven character a lot more than anyone else on the uh, USS Enterprise. Well, but there's episodes where they focus on little furry things. Right, I guess so. I, th- this honestly is the first episode of the original Star Trek I've ever seen. Yeah, do, do you hate Star Wars as much as you hate Star Trek? I don't hate Star Wars, but I don't care about it at all. Yeah, so just anything sci-fi you're not down with. Why uh, didn't they? I like sci-fi horror. Yeah, it's kind of a lot. I like it, but no, I don't really care about. Why didn't sci-fi. they teach the stormtroopers to shoot better? I don't ever understand. <laughs> yeah. it. They miss everything all the time. You think if they were going to clone a guy, which all the stormtroopers are clones, I don't know if you know that. You think they clone a guy who was a sharpshooter? Yeah, not, I not, didn't know not that. A guy that had a, not a guy that had a wandering eye. All well, the stormtroopers are clones? I believe that to be the case. In episode two of Star Wars, yeah. it, said, uh, it was called Attack of the Clones. Right. And it, um, some council or something said, there is a planet 
to like a storm planet. And we all we do here is clone guys. And the guy we're cloning is Django Fett. It's Boba Fett's father. And Boba Fett, I believe him to be a clone of his father. Django Fett said, I want a clone that I can raise on my own. It's like my child, but it'll be me. Right. And then Boba Fett would go on to be a great bounty hunter. But in the meantime... The bounty hunter! <laughs> sometimes you gotta let him do that. <clears throat> um, but Django Fett, I believe, was is every... Is stormtrooper essentially, but in the most recent ones, a stormtrooper like defects, right? And like the black guy, I think, yeah. right? Yeah, is he a clone? Um, is there a bunch of Boyega, people that John look, Boyega, yeah, that look like him? Although, if all the stormtroopers maybe, took their helmets off, they'd all look like maybe him. Maybe there was time between there where that changed, but I think mm. for a while they were trying to create a a uh, human army versus a uh, robot army. Yeah. See all this stuff. I just don't give a shit about this. There's stuff. a lot. I, there's a million things I don't know about it either. But that, that's what I remember from yeah. when it came out 20 years ago. Yeah, know. it's the same reason I don't like fantasy. It's just it's too much like backstory, too much shit. I just don't. Here's I'm, the thing: I'm not we invested live, enough. We live our lives, and we know the rules of the lives in which we live. But every time a new sci-fi or fantasy comes up, they said we have our own rules. Won't you like to learn them and then live in that world? Like, no, I know right, how to like, fucking eat a I, sandwich. And that's I don't. Like. I can't. I cannot fathom in any shape or form from my fa- my worldly experience, mm-hmm. uh, uh, like that. I'm gonna like uh, talk to a dragon and pet right. him and like right. fly him somewhere <laughs> right. to go, right. like fly him over to Jason's house <laughs> so he can hang out with your dragon and we can. Make swords. And, and with that dragon and that flight, there's a million rules that we have to understand and, and accept yeah. and then go forward knowing yeah. these rules. I don't have time for that no, fucking shit. No, it's too shit. much. It's way too fucking much. <laughs> Fuck all that. All right. There's a lot more we could ask about this, but I know Tim's uh, dick is real hard. <laughs> Not yet. Can, can we, what's the lady's first name? Can we say? Clara. Clara? Clara. It's a pretty good name. It's a good name, right? <laughs> I love her boutique. Pretty good name. <laughs> she probably has beautiful earrings. Will she pierce my ears? I, I don't know what you're talking about. Thank you very much. Rotten Tomatoes, there's no score there. Um, this is a, one episode, like we mentioned, of Star Trek, so it is individually rated versus is it like a series as a whole. Uh, Blake, what do you think people from around the world rated this specific episode of Star Trek? On IMDb? Right. Um, which is... In, oh, what does that stand for? Yeah. Inaccurate measurements depicting butterflies. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Uh, I would give it. I, I I know what it's gonna be. I didn't see it, but I just know all these fucking Trek nerdies. Go, they'll be like, "Oh, this was the greatest thing ever. <laughs> I loved it. I got it on DVD, Blu-ray, and I got the original version on my VHS, and I bought it on Beta for thirty six dollars at the convention. I'm gonna give it a seven point four. Seven point five, actually. See, I know how these fucking retards are. Yeah, I didn't are. get to guess. What is, what's your guess? Seven point five. So it is a seven point five. He's right. And that's nice. From, that's from over thirty one hundred ratings. Of course. On that one episode. Hey guys, why don't you stop watching Star Trek and get laid? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. That, uh, that is actually the wrong word I chose. <laughs> what word were you looking for? Yeah. Freaks. <laughs> okay. That is wildly different. Fucking word. nerds. <laughs> That's a very different word. I might need to go back and fix that, maybe. <laughs> I didn't mean it in direct I, I meant guys who don't have sex from watching Star Trek. Yeah, we have a lot of freaks who watch sh- or listen to our show, so you better be careful. Uh, there are a lot of uh, viewer reviews, but I'm having a hell of a time with my computer right now, so I may skip that. I'm going to give it two more seconds. Well, you want me to do all of them? I can do all of them. It was so great. It was the way they brought it into the... The, you know, the way things are now with the nuclear war, it was amazing. And I really loved it. like that the, the, the showed the problems with <laughs> with, uh-huh. with beaming <laughs> and how they hadn't perfected beaming yet. He's doing it, Tim. He's doing it. <laughs> He's doing it. I really think the black lady should have been on here more. A horror? <laughs> oh, boy. You know, she kissed Kirk oh one time. Oh, my. I had a horror shame her, you know what I mean? <laughs> Uh, there's 38 reviews, though, for this And they all sound episode. exactly what and I said. they're all said. exactly Read them what all. you did. Read every one of them. Read every <laughs> single one yeah. verbatim. Yep. She, I, just, she just canceled on him. He's like, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing to do, man. Let's go. Let's I, go. I, I, won't, I won't read them. Read it in the Read, read in the one. Nerd, read read one. It, but read it in the nerd voice. Read your best <laughs> one in my nerd voice. This one's from uh, BK Bulkabang. This is um, eight, 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 8 out of 10 scars, past, present, and future. One of the best Star Trek episodes was this one where the Enterprise has troubles reconciling the past. 
<laughs> present and future when it interferes with a transport beam <laughs> that takes a man from the future on a ship and the whole ship and the crew are beamed to 1968. <laughs> I'm Casey <laughs> <laughs> you want a Scooby Snack? <laughs> My nerd sounds like Casey. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Well, when you said 1968, I was like, the number one song by the Beach Boys. Anyway, there, that's a. Uh, I mean, people people really seem to like it, actually. But that's fine. I, you know, it doesn't mean we liked it, right? Ladies and gentlemen, as we start our descent, please make sure your seat backs and tray tables are. Tim, are you almost hard. done recording your podcast? <laughs> It's hot in here. This vagina ain't going to eat itself. No, she did text me. She said, um, no, it's probably not going to happen tonight. Not going to happen tonight? Oh. No, I don't think so. So is uh, Blake going to have to service her? <laughs> she was looking the, at this as a date where something would happen, not just show up in the middle of the night for a piece of ass. Oh, say, you know Lame. what? Lame. No, that, you, you, <laughs> you still got to be sweet. And you're like, oh, I didn't mean it that way. I'm, you know. How old well, I'm just going to be like, I meant it that way. How, so. how old is Clara? How what? How old is Clara? My age, forty two. Okay, see, that's that's it's way too old. For me. <laughs> <laughs> what's your what's your what's your max? No, um, uh, if I jump on a, a one fifty <laughs> bench <laughs> or, or, or Deadpool <laughs> military <Dead> press. <laughs> if I'm on a dating website, I put my uh, date range at like I think I do like thirty five to forty two. Okay, think, yeah, I think that's, that's about where, where mine are I, I am forty right yeah. now, so I think that's about where I put mine. Yeah, that's pretty good. And then, and then I, you can also do if you add, if you pay a little extra, you can also say so. I put thirty five to eighteen, but I put a second range eight, uh, date range is eighteen to nineteen only. <laughs> <laughs> I want someone who knows my daughter. <laughs> Don't call her daughter. <laughs> we feel I feel bad now that we screwed up your. Oh no no, it's fine. It's fine. He's gonna break up with her anyway. It's fine. This way he doesn't have to drop any more chlorine tablets in his uh, <laughs> hot tub. That's right. I go my hot tub by myself. It's all fine. We, we saved him a few bucks. That's right. Um, let's uh, that was grade it now, right? Yeah. Tell- one, one through seven, uh, based off of the television show Wings, which is one of the greatest shows ever. Uh, one being the worst, that's a Roy Biggins. <laughs> seven being the best, that's a Brian Hackett. <laughs> Tim, you're our guest, and we have enjoyed having you. How do you rate... Assignment Earth, Star Trek. So I'm gonna I'm gonna round up just like I did last time. This is not my TV show. I would you never hate watch Star this. Trek. I hate Star Trek. I would never watch this like voluntarily. But I understand it has its audience. It was probably was not a terrible thing. Fans ranked at seven point five. Yeah. I gotta follow suit. I'll say like five. Okay, That's probably in the range. Wow. If you're into sci-fi, if you're into this stuff, it's probably good. I don't know. People seem to like it. That's super objective. For someone who hates Star Trek, to give it an above-average rating. That's good. That really speaks, I think, to Tim's maturity level. For sure. And Terry Garr, looking good. So there's something Terry Garr bump, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, The Elvira Elvira person at the end. Yeah, there's... If you're into women, there's a little eye candy here. There's a little something for you. Yeah, a little bump. Captain Philip Resha, sure, I turn to you. How do you rate Assignment Earth? Uh, to me, I, like I said, I, I, I wasn't into Star Trek either. I, I'm sure everybody was jerking off to this whole damn thing. I'm not going to take that away from them. <clears throat> I'm going to split it right down the middle. I mean, it's it, it's it, it's not like it was something new that we ha- I'm having to judge. You know what I mean? Like, we all know that Kirk and Spock are, you know, this is them. This is, they're very successful on this show. Just, I'll give it a four. Give it a four. This is, um, I don't think going forward, we would see Kirk and Spock. Right. I think it's it's going to be uh, the cat and Gary Seven. And the cradle and the silver spoon. And little Bo Peep and the man. man on the little Bo moon. Peep and the man on the moon? Man on the moon. They say little Bo Peep. When you're coming home, Seven, don't know <laughs> when. We'll get together then. You pitch a cat then. Meow, 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 meow. <laughs> we, we're going to see that cat every fucking episode. Yeah. That right now. And Terry Garth. But hopefully sure. we... Well, hopefully we find out why this cat is a woman and how can we see more of her, not the cat. Yeah. Right? Yeah. What button do we have to push I on that so. pen? I think, yeah, it, it's a weird flash at the end where we see the cat as it, a lady. It, it makes it has no context in it. They just all kind of look over and on the couch and there she is. You're probably going to see Terry Gar again. You're probably going to see that lady as a cat. Um, Kirk and Spock, I don't know, maybe once a season sure. they, they pop in right. and say, hey, what's up? You remember us? Well, yeah, I remember you. Remember when we got in that fight, we thought you were a bad guy? <laughs> wah, wah, sorry. I think this is an expensive show maybe to do because uh, maybe um, Gary Seven is time traveling. 
Maybe he's going to all different places, and every time you go to a different place, that's a different set. But if you're on the USS Enterprise, it's that same fucking bridge every episode, right? right? So I don't know. Maybe there's a problem here with the budget. Um, Gary Seven himself, I mean, I think he's supposed to be kind of monotone in nature, just kind of like this this being who's trying to do something good, but he's just, he doesn't have a lot of emotion. I don't know. I didn't hate it. For my first episode of Star Trek and it being a, a spinoff, I, I don't know. I give it a four, too. I give it a four as well. Blake and I have linked like we have a uh, menstrual cycle. <laughs> <laughs> Synced up, yeah. With your score of a five and our scores of fours, we shall close the book on Assignment Earth, and we will never speak of that show again. Yeah! But join us next time, won't you please, when we watch the... Um, oh, boy, I'm getting a... Sorry, I'm having some problems here with my computer. <clears throat> you got to get a Mac. Well, one of the best things you should do is you probably get a MacBook. Now, Mac, they're, 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 oh, no. they tend to... Oh, no. He's making fun of me. <laughs> no, that's, that's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> but I broke in with a sincere one. We'll, we'll march on next week when we, uh, with the summer of spinoffs when we watch the pilot episode of Dr. Domingo Riddle at 24,000 feet. Here's a little something to wet your whistle. A quirky doctor in Ironside make a good team as they try to figure out what would cause the suspicious heart attack of a pilot mid-flight. You can find the entire episode of Dr. Domingo Riddle at 24,000 feet by subscribing to Couch Pilots and SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or your favorite podcast app of choice, and then simply click on one of our classically blue links in our show notes, or go to YouTube, Tim. And you know what to do, Tim. Thank you. Um, Dr. Domingo, I think, is the name of the series that it would be, and then Riddle at 24,000 feet, I think, would be the name of the episode, but it's a spinoff of the show Ironside. You ever watch that fucking shit? No. Mm. You know, do you know Ironside? Uh, I don't think so. I think it's like a detective who was bound to a wheelchair. And that was the gimmick of that show. Oh, I thought it was a Western. What am I thinking of? Uh, Gunsmoke. Rawhide? Bonanza? Rawhide, but yeah. Yeah, but uh, Ironside, I believe it just be, it's just like a 70s cop or something who was in a wheelchair, a detective. And that yeah. it was like, oh, you have iron on your side. Your name's Ironside. <laughs> and he's probably thinking, I'm much more than just a man in a wheelchair. Right, right. I'm, I'm a person with feelings. <laughs> anyway, um, check us out at uh, couchpilotspodcast.com. What do you think, Blake? Yeah, uh, it's a one-stop shop. Uh, you can go there. You can listen to every single episode we've ever done. You can also hear every episode on Spotify. You can't on iTunes, so fuck them. Um, what if I want to leave a voicemail? Uh, you, you can go to couchpilots.com <laughs> and see the number is 910-PILOTS-1. That's 910-745-6871. That's a lot of great information, but is that number active? I, I could not tell you. What if time. I called it right now? You know what? Let's go for <laughs> Your it. Your phone might explode. What's the uh, what's the zip co- or the uh, area code zip code? Nine ten seven four five nine ten seven four five six eight seven one. That's right. Let's see what happens if his phone explodes. We do have insurance. Wouldn't it be funny if it worked? Please state your name after the tone, and Google Voice will try to connect you. That's good. Tim, is it gonna go? I wonder if someone else got our number. Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> you waited too long and someone else got her number and now it's for like a, a free like a clean needle exchange place <laughs> I got the sign for it. hold on <laughs> it's not coming through at all it's going to no one yeah uh, so, kind of anticlimactic to end the, end the episode nah. that's how we end story, every episode story line. <laughs> we do uh, have a, a, right, a, I quit. A, a section of the show at the end where we have guest plugs you're the guest oh challenged yeah, listen to that podcast. Yeah, what do you think about it? how long? How long you want to keep doing that show? I don't know. I don't. I have no idea. Do you still have fun doing it? Yeah, for the most part. Yeah, yeah that's how. That's all you need, right? Yeah, it's fun. It's an excuse to meet up with the Wolfords and Hell yeah. fuck around and yeah, whatever. I'll do, do it until yeah. I get bored. Uh, last episode we talked about Internet Freak Show, or maybe, yeah. maybe it was this episode. It was earlier this episode. I don't know. Whatever. Who the fuck knows? <laughs> um, be, beyond Internet Freak Show, do you have any other podcast ideas that you're cooking? No. Say tomorrow the Wolfords die in a car accident. It's terrible. They're both decapitated simultaneously. Yeah. Right, right, right. It's instant death. Okay. Um, would you continue doing the challenge or challenged? And if, if not, would you replace it with something else? <clears throat> well, I'd have to get you guys to watch all 38 seasons of the challenge. Holy shit. And then you could join me for season three. Well, we are used to watching crappy TV, so That's it's right. not going to be a yeah. huge. You, you know. could do it. You could do it. So, so no, re- like if that ended though, you probably wouldn't replace it with anything. You'd be I done don't think podcasting. I would. No, no. I mean, I'd probably do another podcast. I don't know what it would be though. Do a Star Trek podcast. Oh, that's a good oh, one. Oh yeah, he's a real masochist. <laughs> Blake, this is a new season, season thirty-five. It's all spinoffs. Um, sometimes at the end of a se- at the end of an episode, you will say, "This is my time to shine. This is something I want to talk about." Um, I'm looking at you, and it's clear that you have no nothing planned. 
for this part. Well, my show. original thought was I was going to do an, adv- an advice segment. Oh, that's a good one. But we don't have any questions. Tim, do you, is there anything you need advice on that I can? I, I have I have a few minutes Ooh. to spare. No, no, nothing that you could advise me on. I don't think. No really? offense to you. Nothing that you trust <laughs> me with. <huh? laughs> nothing. Nothing I can trust you in. All right, Jason. Um. Yeah, yeah. I've, uh, I was wondering, what's the best way to get a dog shit out of a carpet? Uh, you uh, tear the carpet out. And you put in vinyl flooring. Well, this pilot may have been rough, but this is always a smooth flight here on Couch Pilots. Uh, thanks, everyone. We'll see you next time. Hey, that was great advice, Blake. Later, thanks bitches. <laughs> on behalf of Couch Pilots and the entire crew, we'd like to thank you for joining us on this trip. And we are looking forward to seeing you on board again in the near future. Have a nice day.